it's time for high school football. I'm Jeff Porsche welcoming you to Griffin Field in Geismer for tonight's Rev Game of the Week between the Dutchtown Griffins and the East Ascension Spartans. Before we talk about tonight's game, we're going to send it over to Jeremy Terrio and Monica Arnold, who are standing by with some student interns from Dutchtown High School's Sports Entertainment Marketing class. All right, thanks, Jeff. I'm Jude, and I'm an intern for this Revs Game of the Week, and I'm here with Jeremy Terrio and Monica Arnold. Okay, all right, tell us what you do on a daily basis at Rev. So it's kind of hard for me to actually give a daily basis because things change from day to day. But um, our department, we're, we're community relations and business development. We do a lot of media relations and what that means is uh, like writing press releases, responding to the media, going on the radio, doing radio interviews, talking about the, the good things that Rev is doing, talking about some of the technical things that Rev is doing. Um, you know, Monica and I oversee a lot of the philanthropy that 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 Rev endeavors to, to participate in or support throughout our entire nine parish region. So we're all the way from Grand Isle, all the way up to Baton Rouge. So we have 60,000 customers, 60,000 you know customers that, that are passionate about organizations that they want us to support and partner with them. Okay, Monica, tell us what you do on a daily basis at Rev. Well, I've been there for about five years now, and every day is a little bit of something different. Um, we deal with lots of different organizations on the daily, whether it's um, we, the local chamber or ALS or different nonprofits. Um, and then to top it all off, you know, just enjoying the every single day and giving back to this wonderful community that we're here to serve. All right, Jeremy, tell us about the rebrand. So the rebrand, I'm glad you asked about that. So we, uh, this year we actually so we merge three companies. So Red is a little fun working acronym for us, but it stands for Reserve Telephone Company is the R, E is the ETEL, and V is Vision. Um, we merged these three companies at the beginning of this year. So like in February, we rolled it out to our customers first. And then in April, we kind of ripped the Band-Aid off and went full-fledged Rev. So, you know, that's everything from merging three different websites to moving those three companies onto one website. Um, so, yeah, it's just something, I mean, we're, we're seven months in now. Now. It takes a little while for our rebrand to really stick, So, uh, but I think the community has really embraced our rebrand. Uh, they just know that we're a new name, same local company. All right. And Monica, Rev has been around 80 plus years. Tell me what they have done to connect with the community. We're all around this community and in so many different ways. Just last week, we were in the schools uh, recording these tailgate shows, speaking with different faculty and staff. That was so much fun to get to be inside of the of the classroom. And um, also, we d give out these Reach a Kid, Teach a Kid grants. That's another way that we get to give back to the to the, each class or different classes and stuff. And uh, it's just an amazing experience. We're always, you know, different types of things so you never know where you're depending on the day uh, but you're always helping in some way some form of fashion all right that's it for us in the box stay tuned for the upcoming rev game of the week there are a lot of reasons tanner mcgee spent the last seven years fighting for families in the legislature but there are three that stand above the rest julia grace and kate as a father of triplet girls, Tanner believes the most important things we can give our children is a loving home and a safe community. That's why he served in the legislature, and why with over a decade of legal experience, Tanner McGee will be a judge our families can depend on. B.T. Chapman and A.J. Pickett with Advantage Therapy are honored and excited to team up with Dutchtown High School's athletics. At Advantage Therapy, we are dedicated to helping our patients regain the highest possible functional status through one-on-one -on -one patient care. Advantage Therapy has spent nearly two decades providing both outpatient orthopedic physical therapy and occupational therapy to the people of Ascension and surrounding parishes. From all of us at Advantage Therapy, Go Griffins! Dr. Brian Hollis is Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Dr. Hollis has an excellent reputation for bringing state-of-the-art technology and the highest standard of patient care to Ascension. He attended LSU, LSU Dental School, and he completed a residency to become a board-certified specialist in orthodontics. An avid supporter in our community, Dr. Hollis is married to Celeste Pyra Hollis, and they have four children. Dr. Hollis, Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Grow up smiling with Hollis Orthodontics. 
Hi, we are live with the PPTV Network, where one of the top athletes is about to make his important decision. We know his character, and nothing will hold him back. I'm glad to have my family and friends here for this choice. It's more than my career. It will affect the rest of my life. I choose peak performance physical therapy. The decision is in. Why choose peak? The reputation and their record of success is unmatched. When it matters most, another patient chooses peak performance physical therapy. for your car. The Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center wants to buy your car. It's fast, easy, and fair. No matter what make, no matter what model, no matter what mileage, the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center wants it. And we'll pay you cash for it, even if you don't buy from us. It's the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Cash for your car at the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Get to know SEC Heating and Cooling this year. Locally owned and operated by Stephen Conyers since 2013, SEC Heating and Cooling works with residential and commercial customers in Ascension, East Baton Rouge, Livingston, and surrounding parishes. SEC specializes in preventive maintenance, repair, and complete change-out and installation of energy-efficient central air systems. From professional sales and expert installation of central AC systems to repairs and ductless AC systems, we can handle all your needs. For total peace of mind, call SEC today. No one teaches you what to do immediately after an accident. Once everyone is safe, your first call should be to an attorney, not the insurance company. Don't let the insurance company take advantage of you at your time of need. Call the Title Law Firm. We'll walk you through what you need to do in real time. But you can take advantage of the Title Law Firm's 30 years of experience. Before you call your insurance, make a free, no obligation call to the Title Law Firm. Call 756-0007 when you're injured. You gotta call. You gotta call Title. Welcome back to the Rev game of the week at Griffin Field, Dutchtown High School. Dutchtown, 5-3, and 3-1 three, three and one in district, will host East Ascension, who is 5-4, and 4-0 four, four and oh in district. And this is basically the game of the year in district 5-5A, five, five and we're glad that they saved it for week 10. Jeff Porsche and David Swacker with you, and... We'll talk about the impact of this game in a little while, but first let's just talk about the coaches, Swag. Well, at East Ascension, you have Darnell Lee, an East Ascension graduate, in his seventh year, and you see his record there, 49 and 27. Guy Mastretta took over for Benny Saya in his sixth year, and his uh, record, 36 and 24. You know, our, our last week's results, but well, we had a heck of a game, uh, Jeff, when um, – you had Denham Springs not scoring <clears throat> not scoring any points through the third quarter, then scored 21 in the fourth quarter uh, to beat Dutchtown 21-17. Uh, you had um, East Ascension 16-0 over Live Oak, and Walker over Santa Ma at the pit 35-7. And the notebook on this series, and it's entering its 19th year, as East Ascension leads the all-time series 10-8, to 8, but look how close the points scored is. There's one point separating these two teams. EA has outscored Dutchtown 377-376, to 376, and it just shows you how close this series has been. Home records at Griffin Field, Dutchtown is 5-4. and four. At Spartan Stadium, EA is 6-3, and three. and you see the winning streaks, and right now EA is on their longest winning streak ever, Dutchtown trying to snap that tonight. They have a five-game winning streak from 2016 on. Dutchtown, a seven-game winning streak from 07 to 13. Most points scored in a game, 06. Dutchtown, 140 to 20, a game that was later forfeited. And EA in 2003 won the opening game in this series by a score of 49 to 13. Boy, I'm going to tell you what, Jeff. 
When you talk about rivals, you talk about East Ascension and Santa Monica. It was 21-21 going into this year. East Ascension won this year. But you look at this. I mean, the, the, the record is very similar in a lot of ways. But when you talk about the points scored, Dutchtown has scored 376 points, averaging 20.8 points a game, and East Ascension 377, 20.9 points. So that's about as close as it gets. And uh, so it's a pretty nice rivalry. And then when you're playing for all the marbles, a district championship, that's what it's all about right here in Week 10. And while we have a moment, we, we're joined by our, one of our student interns, Caleb Atkins, is over here, Dutchtown student who is interning in the class. And uh, he's, uh, he's here joining us. And so I, I'll, I'll ask you a real quick question. As a student, um, what type of experience have you had with the Dutchtown East Ascension rivalry? And uh, have you been to any of the games before? Uh, yeah, it's a big game. We had a real big one last year, everybody feeling kind of personal about them being the home team at our home field. So it's uh, it's definitely a big game for everybody, and we really feel that we can win this one. Well, Guy Mastretta didn't use that as a motivational tool, did he? No, he did not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot about that. That's a great call, Caleb, because uh, last year this game was played at Griffin Field, and this was the only field with turf at that point. So they put up the Griffin, I mean, the uh, Spartan Nation uh, – poster and all the ea flags and everything so it, to where we tried to make it as hospitable as possible but yeah that that uh that that added a new wrinkle to the rivalry right yeah and, and coach lee said thank you yes <laughs> so dutchtown trying to return the favor on their home field this season and uh this game has a big impact on a lot of things uh, we're going to talk about this as the night goes on uh swack and caleb the uh District title is on the line. Uh, an outright win by East Ascension would give them an outright district title. A win by Dutchtown, as you look at the five five A records, a win by Dutchtown would get them to four and one, and EA would drop to four and one. So you would have at least a two way tie for the district title. Denham Springs could join that three way tie with a victory over Walker. So that's a that's that's what's at stake right here. But even more importantly, but we gotta speculate on this stuff right here. East Ascension probably is in a position to get a home game in the first round of the playoffs. Dutchtown's a 17 right now. That would be a, a road game if they stay there. If they beat East Ascension, likely that would get them a home game. But that's not guaranteed. But it would likely move them up enough in the power rankings to get there. If Dutchtown loses tonight, not only do they lose a shot at the district title, they also are definitely going to play on the road. So it's a big game for Dutchtown and a big game for East Ascension. And tomorrow night we'll be at Santa Mall with the Live Oak game. And, you know, last week we showed you that Santa Mall was at 28, which would be on the bottom of the uh, power rankings. And a loss last week moved them from 28 to 29. Right. And so if they sh should happen to beat uh, Live Oak, uh, they feel strongly, Coach Oliver feels strongly, that they're going to move back into 28 or possibly into 27. You know, Jeff, when you look at the power rankings from about halfway down, which would be 14th, you know, there are a lot of records that are four and five and uh, five, well, not five and five yet, but five and four. Yeah. And so th th there could be a lot of movement going because – Everybody's playing somebody in their district. So that's a there's, there's a lot at stake over these next couple of, of nights. And, of course, we got the doubleheader again this week. Last week we had the doubleheader at Live Oak with Dutchtown and Denham and then EA and Live Oak. And this week we have the doubleheader Thursday. This game tomorrow night, as you said, at the pit, Live Oak and Santa Mar. So a lot of important football to be played. And, Caleb, you've uh, – you, you're getting to the end of this soul experience out here. And, um, you know, what has that been like for you uh, getting to, to check out these games and, and work out here with the uh, and shadow everybody here on the field? It's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it's definitely been a different experience seeing how everything goes right here. It's completely different watching it from this perspective rather than being in the stands because you yeah. see a lot more of the work going into it and everybody kind of running around making sure we got everything going right. Yeah, it looks easy, but we're out here 4.30, 5 o'clock and getting cameras ready, and sometimes it takes up to the last minute to get this working. But uh, we appreciate all the uh, 
everything that you've done for us to help us out here this, this year. Yeah, just, Jeff, there's a lot of people, and you mentioned this last week, that they do a lot of work like picking mm-hmm. up wires, placing wires, all kinds of things. It's not all about announcing and stuff. As East Ascension takes the field, we already saw the Dutchtown Griffins take the field as we are just about ready for the opening kickoff, the Dutchtown Sound coming onto the field, and we'll have our national anthem in just a moment, followed by the coin toss, and then the opening kick. So both teams are ready. Dutchtown, the home team, as you see right there, wearing the black tonight, East Ascension in all white. So you have the contrast in uh, in uniform colors here tonight, and uh, not a contrast in styles. Both teams play. Ladies and gentlemen, if heavy defense and just enough offense. You know what? We're going to get to the national anthem first. Followed by the playing of the Star Spangled Banner and the Dutch Town Alma Mater. Tonight we have R.E. Linton, a senior, a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and of the cross country team to do our invocation. Can you see the person? If you please bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to honor you tonight with gratitude. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to gather for events such as football games. Thank you for the individuals that contributed to setting, this, setting up this event. And thank you for the sportsmanship that these young players represent. Lord, may everyone present here tonight honor you through humble behavior and respect for one another. We ask that you maintain safe conditions for everyone here t- today and continue to allow us to glorify your name with love for one another as well as love for you. That being said, it's in your name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight our color guard is performed by the Dutch Towns Navy Junior Roxy. Members, Cadet Demetrius Vaughn, Cadet Austin Mendoza, Cadet Ryan Curran, and Cadet Caleb Spears. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem and our Dutch Town alma mater brought to you by the Dutch Town Sound.
Sheely Bell and the Dutchtown Sound with the national anthem and alma mater. And stay tuned at halftime as the Dutchtown Sound will do their entire showcase performance at halftime as Saturday will be perf performing at showcase over at UL Lafayette. So stay tuned for that. But right now it's time for football as we are moments away from the coin toss and the opening kickoff between East Ascension and Dutchtown. And you see the captains over on the far side for East Ascension. And you see the captains on the home side coming. That's Pearson Pyrar, A.K. Burrell, Dixon Agoo, and Ethan Fields. Over on the visitor side, you see 55, 54, 36, and 1. That's Antoine Foster, Sidney Joseph, and... Kevin Toussaint and Chance Banks. And so we are ready for the coin toss, and then we'll get to the starting offensive lineups and defensive lineups and the opening kickoff. Week 10, District 5, 5A, game of the year. High stakes football tonight in Geismer. Well, he's talking to East Ascension. So they must have won the toss. They're going to defer and put their defense on the field, and Dutchtown will come out on offense. And while we have a chance, let's look at the Dutchtown offensive starters for tonight, and they're led by senior quarterback Pearson Pyron. And in the backfield, you got Gary Dukes and A.K. Burrell. They'll usually not be on the field at the same time, but they're, they are your one and two backs right there. At receiver, you got Tyler Adams and Caden Mackey, Dylan DeSherry at tight end, Wayne McKinney, Taylor Graham, Chase Cancelosi, Hunter Lowry, and Ethan Fields on the offensive line for Dutchtown. And now let's get to the East Ascension starters on defense. And they run a 3-4 with, well, actually a 4-3 four, four, with Womack, Gray, Joseph, and Hobdy on the line. And then they actually have two linebackers, although Stanga kind of plays a hybrid out there. Hayes and Coleman are the two starters. And then we said Stanga, he plays kind of a weak side safety. The corners are Nadarius Walker and Deron McZeal. And then the other two safeties are Lamar Bolden and Chase Bouve. And we are ready for football, Swag. Yeah, last week, uh, Jeff, uh, against uh, Live Oak, East Ascension, almost every down except a few played two safeties deep trying to protect against that pass and did a pretty good job with that. So it would be interesting to see what happens tonight because, uh, you know, the, the running game for both teams is outstanding and you're going to have to defend that first. And the kickoff is taken at the two. And that's A.K. Burrell, and he runs into a brick wall and cuts outside. He gets to the 20, and he kind of made something out of nothing there. He gets to about the 23, where it's going to be first and 10. Now, the East Ascension defense, last week when they played Live Oak, they faced a kind of drop-back pass kind of offense. This week they're going to see a lot of, uh, a lot of quarterback option with Pyron, a lot of ground game. And you, you just a saw it on the field, too. But you just saw it, AK personal foul penalty against Dutch uh, against East Ascension. Yes. And you saw AK, he looked like he ran into a beehive of offensive defensive players and then broke it to the outside for getting plus yardage, and then you get an extra 15 right here. And so good field position. It's going to be at the 39 for the opening play for the Dutchtown offense. And we'll see what East Ascension does on defense. Last week, when the tie turned in the Denham Springs game, it was because basically Denham Springs put the entire defense in the box and dared them to throw, and they could not, as you have a whistle right away. And we're going to have a timeout called by East Ascension. And well, so we're East gonna Ascension had one or two extra guys on the field. We're going to talk about the early college option program really quickly here. 
as the early college option program is in its 10th year of offering all Ascension Parish high school students the opportunity to learn or to earn their associate's degree from River Parish's Community College while also completing their high school diploma from one of the four APSB high schools. Students are able to play all sports at their home high school. In order to attend, students must begin in their ninth grade year. Their junior and senior year, they have a full college schedule. Enrollment for the 2023 school year begins in January. For a tour, please contact early college, early.college at APSB.org, which you see on the screen. And now we're ready for first down. And uh, option keeper, Pyron, gets maybe a yard. And you, you saw there defensively the Spartans are lined up. It looked like a 6 Two defense. I'm sure with that, that's usually what they call a goal line defense. I'm sure uh, with that, uh, probably playing man to man. And there they are right there. One, two, three, four, five. They're copying that blueprint from Denham Springs. Second and nine, man in motion. And there's Duke's got a big hole outside, breaks the tackle, and but cannot get free. It looked like he was about to break that tackle from the Darius Walker, but he held on for dear life. And well, the, mo the motion, it. Jeff, brought the outside defender there, and there's nobody to uh, nobody to take the outside containment, except it's one on one blocking on the outside. So Dutchtown had a play right there, and I thought Duke's was going to break it, but East Ascension with pursuit. Uh, able to make a, a play, making it third and short. So Nadarius Walker saves a long game. Then he was joined by Stanga to close it out. It's third and three. So basically you got a five-man front. And it's an option keeper. Pyron not going to get there. Back he's, to the line of scrimmage. He's a yard shy. He maybe got a yard. But it's going to bring up fourth down. And they're close to midfield. And you see A.K. Burrell coming in. It looks like they're going to go for it right here, Coach. Well, there might be a heavy package right here. And sometimes you see the Wildcat with A.K. Burrell, but he's going to be the setback here with Pyron. Well, I think he's just going to hand the ball off. And then I think 83, the big uh, tight end. The Sherry. The Sherry. He's going to probably take you right to the ball. And there's a handoff to Burrell. First down. And there was the Sherry blocking on the ISO. You know, trying to uh, man on man blocking. Then uh, the Sherry, let's see if he goes up on the linebacker. There he is right in there. And you see Stanga makes the tackle at the 49, but he needed. He needed about a yard and a half, and he got about and, three. And Stang is playing the free safety, so you could see him, not in this picture, but we could see him as the deepest guy for East Ascension. And a deep set snap and handoff to Dukes, who's back in the game. And he's going to get about a yard or two. Looks like they're going to spot it up near the 47, which would be a two-yard gain, second and eight. Tell us what we saw there, Coach. Well, I'm going to just tell you, you know, it, it's going to basically be who's going to be tired in that fourth quarter because the fourth quarter was a deciding uh, quarter for the uh, in the Denham Springs and Dutchtown game. And with this uh, bunched up defense, we're going to see if Dutchtown tries any passes here. As you see, a potential pass right here caught by DeSherry for a short game. Good defense right there. That's Stanga. He's been all over the field nice, here tonight. Nice throw right there by Pyron. And, look, they had that. They, they threw the little tight end dump. Good job by Stanga. And, basically, I would venture to say that Stanga is man-to-man -man on the tight end. I would wonder if that running back, if you know, if you went to the tight end out in the flat and that running back went straight down the middle of the field, what, what is uh, Stanga going to do then? And now what we would have be his the, the Wildcat with Burrell, and he's going to cut outside, flag down, first down, maybe coming back. Burrell gets around so we'll wait for the call. Flag came down in the backfield. 
They're pointing in the Dutch house pointing in the EA direction. Well, I, I, I thought he was looking at the East Ascension side to see what Coach Lee wanted to do. But I would think this would that's be. A, that's a low block there, a little chop block. So that's going to be a lot of yards well, on the penalty. You know, you well. see that call mainly on the offense. But if you're a smaller defensive back taking on somebody, let's see if we can see it. Oh, there right it there, is, right yes. there. Well, that was smaller right there. defensive Bolden. back. Lamar Bolden. Take it, take it on a bigger guy. So this is this is uh, 30 yards in penalties here in the first drive. Right, and uh, Dutchtown doing something that Live Oak couldn't do last week, and that's have a sustained drive. And now it's first and 10 at the 23. Pyron, shotgun, joined by Dukes. Desherry in the backfield, the blocker. Two receivers left. Snap, looking left, and complete, and cuts inside, and it's going to be a short game, but an effective play right there. Tyler Adams with the catch, and Coach, this is something that they didn't do early last week. They, they're throwing a pass, which is putting that thought in their heads that maybe they're not going to run it. Well, you know, that pass right there for, you know, you, a lot of people may call it a pass, but basically in the spread, you're calling that a run play. And there's a flag on the field, and it looks like it's going to be called back. And it looked like that blocker got a little bit in the back there, uh, swinging out there. Because, you know, if you, if you break that tackle out there, Jeff, it's touchdown. Yeah. Adams made a good cut. But it's going to be a 10-yard penalty, and it's first and 20. 6.53 left to go in the opening quarter. No score, EA and Dutchtown. And it's a keeper by Pyron. Finds a hole, gets about nine of it back, maybe about eight, actually. But he gets good yardage on first and long. On that play, if we watch it again, you can see Pyron's going to read the defensive end, and then he pulls it, and then he keeps it. They're blocking. For both plays, either outside keep, uh, outside handoff, or an inside keep by the quarterback. That's Coleman and Hayes on the tackle, and we're going to call it a seven-yard gain. So it's second and 13. The series of downs began with the penalty, and that's well, you have trying a to get a lot back. of receivers right here on the right, and I don't know if you have enough defensive backs. And there's a end around and a few yards right there. That's Mackey on the on the run, Mackey. and it's going to be third and long for Dutchtown. The ball down to the you, you, you look at the whole offensive lines pulling. It's like outside zone blocking, and uh, you know that would be uh, AK. Well, that would be one of his plays right there that we've seen. Yes, fast, strong runner, getting outside and getting up the field, breaking a tackle. You got a third and. 11 or 12 situation. Probable passing down right here. It's Pyron and Dukes in the backfield. Well, Split two, receivers. Two safeties deep. And a keeper by Pyron. And good running. Gets inside the 20. Gets him a little closer perhaps for a field Pyron. goal from Roussel. It's going to bring a fourth down. Well, I, I tell you what, a very good play that almost worked completely the right there. And a uh, very good uh, tackle there by Anthony, Anthony Coleman. Coleman. It's going to be a 34-yard attempt by Corbin Roussel. Definitely not pulling against anybody, but I just do not like these high school hash marks kicking field goals. It's long enough. And he missed it. I tell you what, those hash marks are way out there, Jeff. Yeah. And it's not like college at two yards tighter. In the NFL, they almost you can almost long uh, jump in between them. Uh, it, it just it needs to change. So East Ascension takes over on offense. Let's look at their offensive starters. Antoine Foster will be at quarterback. And in the backfield, you're going to have Samuel and Tyson Washington. Their receivers are going to be Chasson, Franklin, and Jupiter. Offensive line, Sonyet. Joseph, Derez Queen starts at center tonight. Chance Banks and Bryson Martinez. We'll get the Dutch House Foster starters. going straight down the offensive line. Make sure everybody heard. And on first down, a few yards right there for 
Samuel, and we're going to get to the Dutchtown defensive starters right now. They run the 3-4, and on the line you have Braylon Richard, Baron Cozy, and Diego Spears. Linebackers, you have Darius Jones, Dixon Agu, Ansel McCaffrey, Samuel, Blake Bowie starting tonight for Hanbury. Cornerbacks Mackey and Langwa, safeties Burrell and Kling. It's going to make up second down Both and seven. Very good. Both teams very good defensively and offensively. And a nice run by Samuel. It's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. Needs to get to the 30. Got to about the 29. Third and one. You see Walter Samuel right there. It's almost like he was in starting blocks at a track Samuel. meet. And when the ball was snapped, he took off and, and hit that hole going about as hard as you could be. Third and one situation. Good inside running right at the heart of the Dutchtown defense on first and second down. Foster takes a snap, gives it outside, and uh, Dutchtown holds them for a loss. As you see down there at the bottom of the pile, Diego Spears and the Dutchtown defense. This is man on man. And you get any leakage, and you can see the Dutchtown defensive line penetrated and caused Samuel to have to bounce it outside. And you talk about that defense. Look at that. Even with the 21-point fourth quarter, they're still in the running for the, the best defense of all time at Dutchtown with 73 points in eight games. Then that, that 95 points, that was in six games. So they are they are setting the pace right now. Fourth down, and it's a punting situation for and Onaveros. Onaveros. And it's a good snap. And we're going to watch that all night tonight as it's a short punt and a Dutchtown bounce to the 46-yard line. And, Coach, let's talk about that. Last week they had trouble. They had the one punt blocked. They had a lot of pressure on them, and you saw some more pressure there just now. Well, Octavares is doing all the kicking. He's only missed one extra point and two field goals on the year. But, boy, on the punting situation, a little bit of a, a sag, a little lump in the uh, snap, taking a little time to get back there. And, boy, it just seemed like uh, Live Oak could block it. And then one time they came and easily blocked it. Uh, and that was the difference in the game. They did pick it up and try to score. And there's a handoff on first down. And there's a short gain, maybe one yard okay. before – Coleman and company make the tackle, and so Dukes gets Here's back up. And both these defenses the play so, so well, and that's actually Stanga who came in and got help from Hayes as well. Uh, Stanga is going to be in on every tackle, and the reason why he's an unblocked defensive player, you know, the linebackers probably are going to get blocked, but Stanga's going to find somewhere, and he's running downhill on every play. And it's a bad snap. And Tyron will go down for a Tyron, big loss. That's, that, the roles are kind of reversed there. We've seven. seen a lot of trouble with East Ascension with snaps all year. Up, now let's look at the replay. It's a high snap that time. A little and high and a little hot right there. Yeah. And so that's going to bring up third down. So we were more expecting East Ascension to have trouble with the snaps. But and, you know, if you Mike Janice right here, offensive coordinator, uh, for Dutchtown, the one thing you don't want to do is create a problem right here. This is smart right there. And Adams has a big hole. He's to midfield. He's going to get to the 45, and he's going to be about nine yards Hello, shy of the first down. But one more tackle, or one more broken tackle, and that could have been a first down right there. And right there, if the defensive end, you know, if he would, you know, somebody would have said, well, on third and long situations, they're going to throw the little quick screen out there. The defensive end cannot rush, and he can actually get outside and try to bat down the pass. Lamar Bolden made the first down saving tackle, and that's a good snap to Roussel and an easy punt. Line drive, bounces, and did, did Pearson save that? He did. And it's going to be at the two-yard line, the ball uh, deep the snapper. Look when at the him. Ball, when the ball crosses the goal line. It didn't cross. It may not have crossed. He got it right at the goal line. And the and the official was right there to see it. Now we'll see it again. The, yeah, power on the 10 fish yards was right. Ahead. Yeah, you're right. It was a little bit short. So... 
that first down, or excuse me, that third down pass to Adams that got about 15 yards, that that basically set up that punt. And that's why you got to get something on that third down. If uh, if you get an incomplete pass right there or no gain, that ball is going to be rolling down probably about the 15, 20 yard line. Yeah. That's a big break for Dutchtown right there. With 38 seconds left, we're near the end of the first quarter. One of the fastest first quarters I've ever seen. And so. East Ascension in a hole. They're going to go under center. Remember, they have some snap They're issues. Probably a quarterback stake here. And he's going to lose a yard, maybe. Let's look at the gang tackling right there. That's Spears again. No he's not in the end zone. That's going to be second down and long. And, you know, it's amazing how this game works like this, Jeff, because if you're patient enough as a coach, you finally get this situation. You know, Coach Mastretta, you know, tried to get the first down, didn't get it. So hey, this, this is what we're going to do. Made a good play on special teams to down it, you know, inside the five, let's just say. And going, now East Ascension. Yes, there's a second down handoff out of the end zone, and he gets free. Samuel on the final play of the third quarter. It's going to be third down when we come back. But we're going to break right now. No score between East Ascension and Dutchtown. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. There are a lot of reasons Tanner McGee spent the last seven years fighting for families in the legislature. But there are three that stand above the rest. Julia, Grace, and Kate. As a father of triplet girls, Tanner believes the most important things we can give our children is a loving home and a safe community. That's why he served in the legislature and why with over a decade of legal experience, Tanner McGee will be a judge our families can depend on. Curbside service. Second, Second quarter about to begin. No score between East Ascension and Dutchtown. Dutchtown missed a field goal, and that was the only scoring opportunity so far here tonight. Let's look at what happened last week in District 5-5A. We kind of talked about it already. You had the big comeback win by Denham over Dutchtown. A shocker, 21-17. to East Ascension on Friday night. We were there live for the 16-0 win over Live Oak. And Walker beat Santa Ma 35-7. I tell you what, uh, 5-5A has an opportunity if the right people win, to get four or five out of the six people in the uh, playoffs. Right, and potentially three home football games, three teams in the top 16. And so it's third down and seven from about the six. And we have a whistle. And a timeout is going to be called by Dutchtown. And so... We'll take a break right here. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. The Avalon Training Staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment, Donaldsonville, Glass and Body, Gaucher and Amade, Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Chevrolet, Walk-Ons, Austin Fire Systems, Eustace Mortgage, SKR Construction, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. So it's third and seven. Dutchtown calls a defensive timeout. They obviously saw something they didn't like, and both teams have used the timeout in the first half already. Well, well uh, Jeff, uh, Coach Chris Harrell, who's in a total outstanding job this year, yes. evidently didn't like it when you had doubles stacked up on both sides right there, and there's a lot of turf. Uh, so we called timeout to make sure they got it straight. Now he's essentially comes out with four wide receivers. And they spread, and they run, and the keeper is a first down. Antoine Foster, as they spread out the field, and there was only about three, three four Dutchtown defenders in the middle, and that's where they ran. See the uh, guard pulling, kicking out, turning up. 
and getting, uh, you know, with the wide receivers there, that brings people out of the tackle box for Dutchtown. And that's not a big deal to Dutchtown because most of the time with their front six or front seven, they could easily uh, handle anybody who could not handle it on that play. EA gets out the hole, and Foster's going to try to throw. He's under pressure from Bowie and throws it out of bounds. Receiver in the area. He was way outside the tackle box anyway. It's going to be incomplete, but that was a big first down play going back to the previous play, as you see this one right here, because they would have been punting inside the 10. Well, yeah, they got that completely covered all over the field. You know, somebody right there, the quarterback's running to the right. Somebody's got to go deep. Uh, Somebody's got to try to get open. So the quarterback will have an option. Did a smart thing right there, Foster, by just throwing it out of bounds. I believe that's the first incomplete pass we've seen here tonight. First stoppage on the clock as a flag goes down. Uh, Right as the East Ascension player goes in motion, and they're going to call a legal procedure. Was that the man in motion right there, perhaps, Swack? Well, uh, you know, I I would say no, you know, because, uh, you know, if you're going to call a motion penalty, somebody's not set long enough. the ball back to the 11-yard line. Not sure. Second and 15. Uh, But I, I would have to say one of the linemen had to move. Okay. Second and 15 from the 11. See, that, that's okay right there, that movement there. Okay. And uh, on second and 15, not much. As you see, that's a Bowie and Kling. And I believe Cozy coming in on the tackle. Actually, McCaffrey. Watch that. It's going to be third and long. You got a seal right there. And turn up, you know, the, the right tackle, Martinez, right there. Just had a problem dealing with the outside backer there, or defensive end. And he was able to slide off and make a play. Getting a third and 14 situation. And the East Ascension now in a position where they got to get some yardage here so they're not punting near their own end zone. Or they could get a first down here. You never know. Well, you know, you look around, there's not a free safety in the picture here, Coach. But they're all spread on the line. So no pressure, pass, pick at the 20 to the 15, A.K. Burrell, and it's – Going to be in the red zone. First turnover of the night. Dutchtown takes advantage. And on the snap, I was sitting there wondering if somebody in the white shirt gets past, which, you know, that was probably what he was looking at right there. Yeah, he AK was looking at did a good job coming from that linebacker spot, backing up on a snap, keeping your eyes on the quarterback, watching those eyes, and it was able to shift and uh, make that interception right there. Very good play there by the senior linebacker for Dutchtown. So AK on defense makes the play and he'll go to the bench and Dukes will play running back right now as it's gonna be a keeper from Pyron, cuts outside. He's down to the 10, to the five. And he has a first and goal inside the five at about the two. That's Pyron right there. Look at a run there and uh, just a good job there by the quarterback taken down by Stanga and others on the East Ascension side and it's first and goal. They're going to say the ball was down at the four. Yeah, Pyro just followed Dukes around. Dukes getting to get the ball and Pyro says that it looks clear out there so I'll take it. And he takes it again. Touchdown. And Dutchtown takes the lead. They strike first, six to nothing, on a four-yard run by Pearson Pyron, set up by the AK Burrell interception. Boy, I'm not sure what adjustment they made, Mike Janice, in there, but watch this: a fake and go, fake, and there it is, wide open, right there. Nobody linebacker is not feeling that B gap hole right there. And Roussel's extra point, good, and will break. It's seven to nothing. Dutchtown leads East Ascension. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Hollis Orthodontics, Ada Law Firm, Raising Canes in Prairieville, Ross Downing, GMC, SEC Eating and Air, Baton Rouge Orthopedic. Clinic Foundation, Advantage Therapy, 
Peak Performance Physical Therapy for their support of our Griffin's Sports Medicine Program. In the battle for the District 5-5A title, Dutchtown strikes first. Four-yard touchdown run by Pearson Pyron. It's 7-0 Dutchtown over East Ascension, and that was sparked by that interception by A.K. Burrell. Two-way player, you see him at running back and you see him at safety. Made the interception, got in the red zone, and Pyron on two carries gets the touchdown. Here's the kick. And it's a short corner kick. That's what they like to do, and a fair catch called. Made by Nigel Murphy, number 19. So, Coach, let's talk about that that, uh, that drive by and Dutchtown and uh, the importance of turnovers here on, in this game. Well, you have the importance of turnovers, and uh, the big thing is you can't be given too many opportunities that you don't take advantage of. And, and right there, that was one of those. Uh, you remember, this thing for East Ascension was right out here. As you see the interception. Yeah. Just keeping your eyes on that quarterback. A lot of times, even all the way up to the NFL, that quarterback will face, his head will look where he's throwing unless he goes to a third or fourth receiver. And on first down, a good keeper right there by Foster. He's, he's going to get about seven, eight yards Boston, on first down. So just Boston running behind his offensive line does a good job. Gets not eight, it's second, second and two. For the Foster through that interception and now trying to come back on offense. A lot of times we see Jalen Lee come in at quarterback to th in passing situations, but Foster has gone the distance so far here tonight for the Spartans. Second and two, almost one. And it's a fake looking downfield, caught first down. That's Washington, Ty's Washington at the 37 or 36 yard line first and 10 make that 46 yard line and this is right into the sideline basically right there Washington usually kicks out that guy 34 but uh, slips on by him he you know, runs out of room into the sideline and picks up a first down A.K. Burrell made the tackle we're going to call his name a lot tonight obviously First down there, Samuel gets a couple. Good job by the Dutchtown line. Both teams are going to make it difficult to run inside here tonight, Coach. And, you know, we set, you know, you talked about it. We set a world the record for that first line, quarter time-wise. And it looks like the, the philosophy for both teams hasn't changed one bit. And it's just a matter of getting the ball to your speed guys and trying to make big plays. Shotgun looking deep. And there's a receiver, Chasson, overthrown by about five yards. And Dutchtown is right with him step for step. Outstanding job, Thank number six. I believe that's Kling on the coverage, or perhaps Mackey, number five. Number five, very good job, you know, right there. There's a penalty, though, and it looks like East Ascension is going to get a first down. So a defensive holding penalty, and now East Ascension taking advantage of the Well, you know, you're going to see a lot of man-to-man -man in this game. And uh, basically, you know, everybody's going to have pass responsibility, and that's about it if you're on the outside. First and 10, 41-yard line, Foster, Keeper, Gets five. Good yardage on first down. Late flag. Foster needs about five yards, but that's a flag. After he was down. So face mask. So now Dutchtown making mistakes on defense. Now you got a five yard penalty, not an automatic first down. Incidental face mask. So it's going to be close to a first down. I think it's enough. It's enough. Oh, they, had, they had yardage before. Okay, it's a, a spot foul. So it's not an automatic, but they did get there. And so it's first and ten. So they're driving on the Dutchtown defense for the first time tonight. Two receivers into the sideline, one to the field. 
And there's an end around and a couple of yards before hit hard by Kling. Also, that was another uh, one of the linemen on the tackle. When you, when, you, when you get this, Jeff, there's nobody out here blocking that man or this man. Yep. And so, you know, if you, if you break a tackle right there, you're in good shape. And, uh, but, Darius but these Jones. outside guys right here, there's nobody blocking them on a sweet play. Darius Jones made first contact on Jupiter at second and seven and flipped by Burrell, short of a first down by about two yards. Well, Foster, I, I think, was supposed to hand that ball off. Watch this. It says, oh, nope, I don't think so. Uh, and so he keeps it. It's what you always teach the quarterback. If something screws up, just follow the running back because that's where the, the hole is being blocked at. And he threw a nice block downfield, too. Third and three. And uh, no. Look at that. Just busting wow. through. That's a goo. A goo blows up Walter Samuel. It's fourth down. I, I, I want to see where a goo came from because he looked like he was a missile coming through there. But you can see that linebacker. They, they up tight. There it is right there. Mm -hmm. I believe that's between the center and the right guard. Yes. Agu says, Coach Harrell, call that one again. Fourth and seven. They're going for it at the 28. Can't really try a field goal here, and it, it's probably no use to punt. And they're going to call a timeout, and we're going to break right here. Seven-nothing, Dutchtown leads EA. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. The athletic training staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment, Donaldsonville, Glass and Body, Gaucher and Amade, Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Chevrolet, Walk-Ons, Austin Fire Systems, Eustace Mortgage, SKR Construction, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. So you're in no man's land right here, Swack. It's going to be fourth and eight from the 28. So what do you do here? Well, now they're going to kick the field goal. Sorry to interrupt. That's a 45-yard. You think Ontiveros has got it in him? Well, Coach Lee does. And, uh, you know, it's just like you say, every, you know, everybody on in that uh, white team's at practice. And it is short. No good. Nearly blocked from the edge. And Dutchtown makes a stand, and it remains 7 to nothing. As you see, coming hard on that block, but missed. And the field goal just short. And if on that target. gets blocked, I, I think it's going all the way back. And that's what you're kind of concerned about with the punts. And that might be why they chose to kick a field goal, but that almost backfired on them as well. But Dutchtown's defense holds, and the scoreless winning streak ended at 17 quarters when they gave up 21 points in the fourth. But that's the only quarter that anybody scored on Dutchtown and District this season up to this game. And, and you know, Coach... Uh, Harold, you know, he, he's saying it's still zero on that scoreboard. That's right. Bend, but don't break. 36, got it. Oh, we got and a helmet comes off and got to come out. So it's going to be play. a loss of two. So nice job by the defense. Let's see who made that tackle. You know, these are so the things uh, that I'm thinking. I perfect. You know, that, that was a fairly long drive that East Ascension had compared to what we've had tonight. Right. So uh, their defense gets to rest a little bit. And the uh, keeper Pyron by Pyron. He's got a big hole. He's to the 35. He's to midfield. And one man to beat. And he takes him for a ride all the way down to the 26. Lamar Bolden holds on for the touchdown saving tackle. S smart play. Look at that pull out there and kick out. Watch Pyron. Number two against number seven. And he says, well, I'm not going to maybe win this, but I'm going to pick up another five or six right there. Two doing a good job, but not giving him any room. Seven right there, just weighing him off into the sidelines and picking up an extra five to eight yards. And so we have another break in the action. So we'll take a break with it. Seven nothing, Dutchtown. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. 
There are a lot of reasons Tanner McGee spent the last seven years fighting for families in the legislature. But there are three that stand above the rest. Julia, Grace, and Kate. As a father of triplet girls, Tanner believes the most important things we can give our children is a loving home and a safe community. That's why he served in the legislature and why with over a decade of legal experience, Tanner McGee will be a judge our families can depend on. And it's 7 nothing at Dutchtown after the long run by Pyron. That puts them back in scoring position. And Coach, Pyron is running that quarterback option to perfection here so far tonight. And, and you know, the, the, the thing that I, I just can't emphasize enough, you see – Number 30 coming off the field for East Ascension. He's starting defensive end, Cameron Womack, just a junior. But the thing I can't emphasize enough, that 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 right that guard and that tackle most of the time, sometimes the tight end, which would be DeSherry, they're going to be pulling. And when you have running backs like uh, Burrell and Dukes, you know, that fake that they give or that, you know, whatever they're doing on the play is causing – Linebackers to take a step, and boy, it why it, it opens up uh, for Pyron doing an outstanding job running in that gap. And a fake and a pass to the end zone. Fade is there, and it's incomplete and dropped. Good job by the defensive back Bolden coming in at the last second. I believe that was intended for Logan Mayo. That's going to be incomplete. I, I, I love the call by Janice right here. Oh, and it's it's just the turf can't bring it in. And well, the, the referee's right there, it. and I, I love that because sometimes they're not right there. Yeah. And he sees that right away. Pretty pass, right on the mark right there. Perfect. But Logan Mayo and, and could you know not what, hold on. You know what's really good about it is getting rid of it quick. And that time, East Ascension, look at that. They make a stop on that option keeper. Joseph Hobley rides Pyron down for a loss of two. So let's look at Got this. the same play right here, Jeff. Fake and go. You see the two guys pulling? And Hobdy, boy, he had a great game last week, the last two weeks. Very much so. Outstanding play. Uh, made some outstanding plays the last couple of weeks. Third and 12. And roll out. Pyron. And it's low and incomplete. And that one was also intended for Mayo. And it's going to bring up fourth down. And a possible field goal situation. Or, but we do not see them going to Roussel. They may go for it right here. And I'm not for certain. Why not? Let's just say it gets intercepted. So you know it's going to be down there around the 10 or better probably. Right. Uh, if it's incomplete, it's going to start inside the 30. And you have uh, four and a half minutes left. Shotgun. Dropping back. Quick pass to Mayo. Going to try to cut inside. Nothing doing, as you see. Anthony Coleman read it perfectly. And it's going to be a change of possession, and EA will take over. Starting to over and so right there you have to think, all right, that's the second or third time they've, they've tried that. And the, the, the pursuit of the inside people, the lineman right there, uh, was very good, able to tackle the receiver, you know, basically for no gain. That worked a little bit earlier when they ran that with Tyler Adams, but right there. Exactly. Right there they, they cor- made the proper corrections. And Coleman makes the tackle. First and 10. Option keeper. And a big hole to the 45 to midfield. And he's off and tackled from behind by Kling. It's a game of big plays. And it looks like right now in this first half, the quarterbacks are going to handle the big plays. And look at him pushing that offensive lineman out of the way. And he makes a key block as Kling rides him down, Burrell by his side, and it's first down at the 28. Good job by the Dutchtown safeties in pursuit. And East Ascension quarterback right there, uh, Foster, nice job of protecting the ball, especially when he was about to get tackled. And the handoff goes to Samuel. 
And it's going to be second down and long after maybe a gain of two right there. Samuels, they're only back right now that you're going to see a lot of. You have some injuries to Johnson and uh, Nigel Murphy, who came out as a wide receiver, is his backup. And he's in the game right now, but I believe he's setting up as a wide, wide out right here. Yeah, well, you saw right there Coach Lee did not say, Foster, we're going to give you a play to read, make the right decision. Uh, I can tell you right now for the experience, the decision Foster's going to make is he's handing the ball off because he's a little tired right now. Exactly. Good observation, Coach. And there he's ready to run here. And he's written down after a about five or six-yard gain. It's going to be third and short as we now head to three minutes in the second quarter. And it's 7 nothing touchdown. They lead East Ascension in the battle for 5-5A five, five supremacy. And we've got a third and four. And it looks like they have a little better opportunities when Samuel's leading Foster around. All right, you got five in the game right here. That's Washington. And that's going to be Washington. And he's going to be your lead back. Lead back. Uh, just like uh, number 83 for Dutchtown. The Sherry. The Sherry. And he keeps it. First down, East Ascension. Inside the 20, into the red zone at the 16. And the drive stays alive. You know, it's a big key right here, Jeff, is, is watch 22. See, he's running with his hands outside. He needs to act like he's got the ball right there. Maybe uh, You know, Dukes has got to do the same thing. Right. Maybe uh, bring pull out a couple of guys to follow him. Exactly. And look, you don't have to follow. Take one step, and uh, whoever's carrying the ball, and I guarantee you, those are the little bitty things that make small plays into big plays. Walter Samuel, big hole, close to a first down. I think he may have it. Looks like he might be shy. Clock running 144. And he's, watch the little move here by Walter. There, come in. I tell you what, if you're a defensive coordinator, you just got to shake your head watching these athletes on both these teams carry the football second and one inside the 10 and there's foster and he is strung out and dragged down by a goo a goo makes another big play in the backfield coach yep. <laughs> you see on we see an injured player on the field as you see the replay after the replay we'll take a short break seven nothing Dutchtown. you're watching the rev game of the week The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Hollis Orthodontics, Cotta Law Firm, Raising Canes in Prairieville, Ross Downing, GMC, SEC Eating and Air, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic Foundation, Advantage Therapy, Peak Performance Physical Therapy, for their support of our Griffins Sports Medicine Program. So that's a big injury right there. I believe that's Samuel who came out, Coach, and now it's after third and five after the big loss. And five from the field. Well, who's going to carry this ball, Jeff? Probably the quarterback. You better believe it. Actually, he's got Lee in the game, and he is the running back. So Foster's the running back. Lee is the quarterback. Look at that right there. We've seen that a few times here. No doubt. Late in the season. Oh, that's not a good one right there. Defense says, all right, we got another five yards. Now we got a third and ten situation. And this may be Lee throwing a pass. And we are only a minute away from the halftime show. And join us for the halftime show. We'll live. We'll have Sheely Bell and the Dutchtown Sound doing their showcase performance so stay tuned for that. East Ascension actually only has one timeout left. You may see two right there. So now it's third and ten. It went from third and one, or second and one to third and ten now. Into the end zone, and it's overthrown. I believe they're looking for Jupiter right there, and it's a fourth down. And they may try another field goal from Ontiveros right here. All right, that, and I see well, Ontiveros you Watch right in. here. You're going to have a hitch on the outside, then a corner. And so basically, nice read right there. 
But just, you're reading that corner back, uh, Jeff, and it, it, if he stays right there, you throw that corner out just a little bit uh, long. And now Ontiveros will try a shorter field goal. This one from 33, left hash. And a whistle. And Dutchtown will call a timeout, and we'll break again. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. The Avalon training staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment, Donaldsonville, Glass and Body, Gaucher and Amade, Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Chevrolet, Walk-Ons, Austin Fire Systems, Eustace Mortgage, SKR Construction, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. 37 seconds left, 7 nothing Dutchtown East Ascension about to try a field goal and cut it to 7 to 3. But Jeff, let me tell you, if he if he makes the field goal, you say Dutchtown that that's a win for you? Probably holding so. them to And it's long enough. And it's good and it's 7 to 3. And we'll talk about that in a second, but we're going to take one more break. 7-3 Dutchtown. You're watching the Rev game of the week. There are a lot of reasons Tanner McGee spent the last seven years fighting for families in the legislature. But there are three that stand above the rest. Julia, Grace, and Kate. As a father of triplet girls, Tanner believes the most important things we can give our children is a loving home and a safe community. That's why he served in the legislature and why with over a decade of legal experience, Tanner McGee will be a judge our families can depend on. It's seven to three as East Ascension's about to kick, and uh, you brought up possibly being a win right there, a field goal. East Ascension had a second and one inside the ten yard line, and they settled for a field goal, right, Coach? And you have to say defense, good job right there. They made the field goal, but look at the score. We're still ahead. And a squib kick, and it's just going to go on the ground, and a wise decision by Brennan Baker junior linebacker for Dutchtown. 31 seconds left. We're going to see them probably kneel on the ball right here. I, I'm going to say you, you're going to get a 40-second clock, so just take a knee, and uh, we go in. Now, you know, Coach Lee's got to say, you know, we, we got this, guys, because you know what? We start out here the second half. We have the ball. So that's a big break for East Ascension, as you see Duke's way back. And it's going to be interesting to see just exactly what happens with uh, Samuel out. And then the other thing that I would look at is uh, they may run a play here, by the way, Coach. Uh, it's just going to be a run. Cut outside. Gets a few. Good yard. Good good carry there by Dukes. But one time out left. They can't do much with this. But they're going to hurry, though. 36 is the second and two. Shotgun, clock running, 13-12, and that might run it out right there. So we're going to go to halftime. Dutchtown with the lead, but East Ascension has some momentum as they kick a field goal at the end of the first half, and they get the ball to start the second half. It's going to be a fun second half, but at halftime, we're going to get Sheely Bell and the Dutchtown sound. We're breaking right now. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. There are a lot of reasons Tanner McGee spent the last seven years fighting for families in the legislature. But there are three that stand above the rest. Julia, Grace, and Kate. As a father of triplet girls, Tanner believes the most important things we can give our children is a loving home and a safe community. That's why he served in the legislature and why with over a decade of legal experience, Tanner McGee will be a judge our families can depend on. We just moved, so there's millions of people. Dahlia's in bloom, over nine acres. When we started, we grew a quarter of an acre. Now I'm taking on new products on the regular. We always dreamed of having this property, so. I want to make my yard look as beautiful as. Largemouth bass. Yep. We've got tons of them, don't we, buddy? 
there are millions of ways to make the most of your land. How will you make the most of yours? Come see us at Ascension Equipment for John Deere sales and service. Save more today and mow tomorrow. You care about your car. So do we. Donaldsonville Glass & Body has been around for over 40 years, providing unparalleled collision repairs and customer service, especially when you and your car are having the worst day ever. When you demand exceptional workmanship, call Donaldsonville Glass & Body. Free pickup for your collision repairs and get it back as good as new. It's your choice, so why not choose the best? Donaldsonville Glass & Body. The A-Team at Eustis Mortgage, here to serve all your home lending needs. Our company is a Louisiana-based, family-owned mortgage company. Our mission is to provide custom-tailored mortgage solutions while educating our clients and providing the highest level of customer service during the transaction. Whether you're buying a home or looking to refinance, we would love to be of assistance to you. The A-Team at Eustis Mortgage is a proud supporter of Ascension Parish Athletics. Piku Builder Supply, your one-stop lumberyard, provides an extensive selection of quality building supplies for your new construction and remodeling. We offer computer-aided estimating of your building and remodeling plans, as well as blueprint copies. From humble beginnings to becoming the industry leader in Gonzales and beyond, Piku proudly supports our local community because we believe in giving back to those who have had a hand in our success. Let the experts at Piku Builder Supply help you with your new project today. For your car. The Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center wants to buy your car. It's fast, easy, and fair. No matter what make, no matter what model, no matter what mileage, the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center wants it. And we'll pay you cash for it, even if you don't buy from us. It's the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Cash for your car at the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. This, this is a walk-on athlete. They push harder and put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day with a taste of Louisiana. Walk-ons, we live for this. Drum majors, is your band ready? Touchdown sound, you may now perform your competition show.
Next, we feature our Griffin Girls as they perform to the Elton John hit song, I'm Still Standing. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dutch Sound Sound and the Griffin Girls. We hope you have enjoyed tonight's performance. So congratulations to the Dutch Sound Sound and the Griffin Girls on a great performance. And good luck to the Dutch Sound Sound tomorrow night, or make that Saturday night, when they perform at Showcase at ULL in Lafayette. And it's 7-3, to three, and I'm Jeff Porsche, and... We are going to keep it here. We're going to talk about a few things. One thing that we haven't talked about so far here tonight is that tonight is the Lopa game. And what that means is this is uh, brought to you by your Dutchtown and East Ascension Allied Health Programs. And what they're doing tonight is they're trying to make awareness of or promote awareness of organ donation. So we got a couple of facts that we'll share with you right now. You have the power to save and heal lives. One organ donor can save up to eight lives, heal the lives of 75 people, and restore sight to two people. Visit lopa.org to learn the facts and to register today. And one more right here in Louisiana. More than 2,000 people are waiting on a life-saving organ transplant. Most of those are waiting on a kidney. And again, to learn the facts... You can go to lopa.org, L-O-P-A, make a, an educated decision, register today. And so we'd like to thank them for helping make this a special night here at Dutchtown High School. That's both the Dutchtown and East Ascension Allied Health Programs in conjunction with each other working on that together. And let's talk some sports here, some other sports, some fall sports as uh, volleyball playoffs are underway and a lot of uh, volleyball action last night and uh, there was a big game or big match at Dutchtown and all three teams actually played Thursday night but Dutchtown they're the three seed in division one and they defeated Bird three games to none you see the scores right there 14 17 and 18 Santa Ma, they're the 10 seed and they beat Scotlandville 9-7-22. and 22. East Ascension lost three games to one to Chalmette. And so that's the volleyball results from last night. And so you have um, one home match on Saturday at 11 a.m. That's at Dutchtown. They're going to be taking on Fountain Blue. Dutchtown trying to win state this season, and they're the three seed, and they're among the uh, favorites right there. But Santa Ma, they swept Dutchtown once this season, so they're they're pretty good too, and they're at, they're at the 10 seed, and they're going to be playing at Mandeville as Santa Ma 26 and 14, and Mandeville 24 and 13. Santa Ma led by Chandra Ewan, who for many years was at Dutchtown assisting coach Patrick Ricks, and Patrick Ricks the, of course the longtime head coach at Dutchtown High School. Yes, uh, Patrick Ricks, uh, a Santa Mall graduate and uh, played football for us and a few other sports, but 
Boy, when it comes to this volleyball, you got to go through New Orleans, man. Yeah, the Catholic schools like uh, Dominican, Dominican, and Mount Carmel, woo, they're really good. And uh, Dutchtown can usually get there. They can usually get to the where is it in, in Lafayette, I believe, or Lake Charles, I forget. But uh, what's that? Where the, where the tournament is? Um, was it the twenty eighth? Well, last year it was in Lafayette. So I, I yeah. th- and I think they uh, they lost to Southside in the quarters. Yeah. But they I, usually make it there, but then usually the Catholic schools kind of come around at, at that point. And, I, and I'm just not real, real certain if they are, um, you know, with just semifinals and finals. I'm not real certain about that. What about the swimming, Jeff? Well, let's talk about that. Uh, it's a big, um, big night for Dutchtown uh, very recently as we we're going to talk about Matthew Okonski. Dutchtown's Matthew Okonski placed first in the 100 butterfly at the CCSL championship meet last week at Crawfish Aquatics. He's the fourth one, with the guy with the most uh, medals right there, Matthew Okonski. Uh, that was at Crawfish Aquatics Pool in Baton Rouge. His winning time was 51.92. He also placed second in the 100 IM. That's 156.54, all the way there on the right. Okonski now qualifies for the LHSAA High School State Championship meet, which will be held November 16th to 19th at the Recreation and Aquatic Center in Sulphur. Overall, Dutchtown placed third in the boys' division and eighth on the girls' side in the CCSL Championship meet. So congratulations to him. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Jeff. Uh, Sulphur does a tremendous job. I've Mm -hmm. gone there a few times to the state swim meet. Uh, their organization is second to none, and you know I'd never heard of things like warm-up pools and stuff like this. I thought you just had a swimming pool, and that was it. Well, but, and th- this is what happens. If your daughter is swimming and she's next, everybody clears out, and whoever's swimming, they get to walk up to the front to see their, their son or daughter th- swim. And when their son or daughter is done, they walk back, and every, there's a constant rotation right there. And uh, it's very impressive. Uh, the mm-hmm. recreation department at Sulphur do a tremendous job handling the softball, baseball, and swim meets, state meets. And I want to give a shout-out to the, uh, the coach of the Dutchtown swim team. You saw him in the middle of that first picture, Jared Schecksneider. And uh, – a very familiar last name around here. Jared is a son of Coach Shake, Chris Shake Snyder. You see him right there in the middle. Uh, he's doing a great job with that. He's a kid I taught twice back in the day, and he's an awesome guy and a wonderful dude. And uh, we're we're very happy for him and the success he's having out here as well. And I know Coach Shake is too. And uh, uh, Lyle just confirmed that the uh, state uh, volleyball is going to be in Lafayette at the Cajun Dome. Uh, where they play uh, basketball. And yep. I'm going to just tell you, shout out to Lafayette, you cannot get a better spot to do anything statewide. Uh, they really love sports there in Lafayette and do a tremendous job of supporting LHSAA activities when they've hosted them. Well, let's talk about what we've seen out here. And, uh, of course, uh, we're also joined right now by our intern, Caleb Atkins, and uh, – why don't you tell us what you've seen out here um, in, in the first half? Um, I've seen exactly what I've heard Dutchtown's going to do all day. They're going to try and throw it real hard. Oh, they're coming out now. Yeah, they're going to try and throw it around a little bit, but not too far. They like to stick it to the, uh, the screens and everything like that. They really want to run up the middle. Coach Venus has talked about how he wants to be real physical and make them want to just keep pounding the ball and keep control of that. So that's exactly what I've expected. And then that defense has lived up to its reputation of just being real solid and not letting a whole lot happen. Yeah, and I, I think we expected a defensive struggle out here. And East, East Ascension has done a great job on defense as well. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. They have. Um, I'm kind of surprised that they've kept Gary wrapped up as well as they have, though. Yeah. He's usually been able to break out a little bit. Well, they they had the shutout last week against Live Oak, so they're definitely a tough defense. But, uh, but uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right with uh, those observations, Caleb. So thanks for uh, helping us out with that and stick around and uh, just uh, check out what we're doing out here for the rest of the night because we're about to start the second half, and East Ascension is going to get the ball. One thing we're going to look for, Coach Swack, is uh, at the end of the first half you had that injury to Walter Samuel, and uh, they're going to take the offense 
first on the East Ascension side. So we're going to see if Samuel's back in the game. But if not, basically they're down to Foster at quarterback. Maybe Nigel Murphy. But that would mean if Foster's in the backfield, that means that you're going to go with the two quarterbacks, Lee at quarterback and Foster at running back. And the, the, the thing that might concern me a little bit, but, you know, there's give and take here. With Lee at quarterback, maybe you're going to throw the ball a little bit more. Well, and, they weren't afraid too early with yeah. him either, though. So. And then the, on the other side, I don't think he's near the runner uh, that Foster is. So, uh, so you give and take in that situation. Now, Roussel to kick, and we've seen those short corner kicks, and you're going to see it again. And it's taken at the 31, and I believe that's Murphy. And he gets a good return to the 40. That's good field position, Coach. Uh, don't, uh, don't mind the kickoff being short. I just need it to be higher uh, so you can't, you know, make things happen, get a little speed going right there. So let's see what they're setting up. It looks like Walter Samuel is in the game. So that's a positive. You never want to see anybody get hurt and see anybody out for an extended period. Well, it might have been just a cramp too, Jeff. You never know. Uh, uh, but I know one thing, if you're running back, you need to have those wheels working pretty good. So they're going to mark it at the 39, and so it's Foster and Samuel in the backfield for East Ascension. They trail 7-3, but they got a shot to take the lead right here on the opening drive of the second half. It's all about big plays, I really believe. I don't think anybody's going to just drive the ball down the field. And a deep pass on first down. Receiver's open, and it is incomplete. As they were trying to get it, let's see, I believe that's number three. Watch when this ball comes down. Watch the defender right here for touchdown. You, you know, he's just watching him. When that ball is caught, I think that's Langwall right there. When that ball is going to be caught, he swipes those hands down and knocks that ball away. Outstanding job defensively. So that was Brennan Thompson, the intended receiver. Second and ten. And Foster got a hole. And he gets about seven. Good job on the right side, taken down by Darius Jones. I said this in the first half, Coach. You know, you got uh, Samuel blocking for you. There he is blocking for you. Not a great block, but he did tie him up. And then you have uh, uh, Foster carrying the ball, and you, you can't ask for a better situation right there. Third and three. And they're going to stay with the same set. Four receivers split, one back, and a flag. And that's costly. We saw that cost East Ascension at the end of the first half, a false start. And you've seen two or three of those tonight on the EA side. That, that, that's uh, pretty disappointing. In week 10, you know, right there, you, you, you have it trying to go to a play. Uh, that would be the best possible play to run. And while you're doing that, you just call out a snap count. And, of course, you don't even have a play called yet. And uh, somebody, you know, is just not thinking on a line of scrimmage in order to get that play on the next call right there and be able to run a situation. Third down pressure from Spears. Deep pass up for grabs. Short. And a – is there a flag? Yes, there is. And East Ascension might be bailed out by the underthrown pass. Pass is incomplete, but there's a flag on the play. Well, I, I saw. Let's look at the replay and see. I, I, you know, this is Samuel coming out of the backfield, and we can't see it right there, but he's being chased, and uh, I'm not real certain on that one. Maybe not a catchable ball. Um, uh, Jones you know, on the cover. Uh, you know, whenever you're chasing somebody, you need to have the, the technique that the, on the last play right there that Langwall had, when he catches the ball, you, you know, you can't raise your hands to try to defend, uh, deflect the ball. And it's first down, and Samuel has a hole outside and taken down. I believe that's Langwall with the tackle. And well, in, in the first half, clean. Jeff. You had, you see, you got your two guys blocking, pulling and blocking. That just amazes me right there. Mm -hmm. The right guard and right tackle pull to the left, and Samuel runs the ball to the right. <laughs> it, it just completely uh, baffles me on just exactly what happens 
right there. What you thinking? Now second, it's second and four, and that's going to be shy of a first down as Hanbury makes the tackle. I make that, make that uh, excuse me, McCaffrey on uh, Walter Samuel. Third and short, third and two. And this is where you this is where you don't want to see the penalty right here. You want to make sure that offensive line stays still. Uh, this, this is where the penalty's been affecting them in this situations like this. And oh, here pressure. they come. They're, they're showing blitz. Here they come. Got to get outside, Jeff. Got to get outside. Maybe trying to make that offensive line jump. Walter Samuel moves to the right. They're running to the right. Outside. There you pitch, go. Pitch, high pitch. But he got it, and it's a first down and more. Inside the 30 to the 26. Good call right there, Coach Lee. Uh, you know, when they're coming right at you, you want to get outside. Now, you can, you can tell Walter Samuel, he doesn't look 100%. The pitch is not real great. Catches yeah. it, gets tripped up right there, and now you're on the 25-yard line. He came up a little slow, and he's out, and we're going to the two-quarterback set. Lee under center, Foster at running back. But, uh, you know, th this is just what I've seen on the vertical, which I really like that pass route because you can have some good things happen right there. There you go. And there's a big hole in another first down for East Ascension. But the ball is on the ground. At least they insist it is. They're saying no. Well, that that uh, that official, that official that 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 looked straight at uh, the quarterback. Well, the running back right there. Yeah, I think that was the ground caused the fumble. They're going to say back at the fourteen. Well, Foster will tell you. <laughs> no, he was. You, you couldn't see it, but that ball didn't yeah. squirt well, loose until referee, he was on the, the ground. The referee saw it. He, he he came running in there and. It, it appears to be the right call. Well, th now, this is what th – this is going to be man-on-man -man football right here. Everybody's in the th – And uh, trying to break free and cannot as basically has to take on the entire defense yeah. right there. And Cozy and Hanbury – excuse me, uh, McCaffrey again. Well, you, you get in the ball and right there, there's nobody blocking that guy. See AK right there, held on, and then you see – a goo as well, just a host of Griffins, as Ted Babin would say, a host of Griffins on the tackle. There you go. Second and 12, low snap, gets it. Lee, end zone, caught at the two. Chass on first and goal, East Ascension. Well, let's take a look at this. Uh, Chass off coming in with a little slant route. And tackled immediately. That's AK on the tackle. Burrell. But now it's first and goal, and East Ascension can take their first lead of the night inside of eight minutes left to go in the third quarter. Hell, I, I would go on a snap right here. I, I would not. You got new guys coming in there. You see 75. He's, he's going right there to block. And a sneak up the middle. No signal. Now a signal, and it's a touchdown. And East Ascension takes their first lead of the night, 9-7 to seven with 7.40 well, left to go in the first. You saw right there, Jeff, some new offensive linemen, or maybe they were defensive linemen. They come in, and this is amazing how, you know, they just wedge it up in there, which you don't really have to block anybody on the outside if you're, you're, you're wedging it up in there. And uh, it, it's amazing how they, they, they got a little movement, and uh, evidently the quarterback on the quarterback sneak got in there. And so Onaveros will kick the extra point to give East Ascension a three point on the lead. year, 20 out of 21. Missed uh, one last week. And he's good right there, and we'll break with a 10 to 7 lead for East Ascension. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. The Outloading Training Staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment. Donaldsonville, Glass and Body, Gaucher and Amade, Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Chevrolet, Walk-Ons, Austin Fire Systems, Eustace Mortgage, SKR Construction, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. Okay. 
10 to 7. East Ascension with the lead. 740 left to go in the third quarter. It's been a good one. And that was the uh, nicest drive we've seen all night. Well, it was a drive. From the 39-yard line. About the only drive we've yeah. seen. And, uh, you know, they, they didn't have real big plays, but they had some nice plays there by Samuel and Foster. The thing that concerns me is both of those guys look like they're basically on their last leg as far as carrying this ball. So AK takes it right up the middle and – Pushes ahead to the 27-yard line. And you talked about it. This was the only really sustained drive we've seen all night on either side. Dutchtown got a touchdown, but that was because of an interception by A.K. Burrell. That drive started inside the red zone, and it was only a two-play drive, Coach. So Dutchtown really hasn't had a sustained drive. They had a long drive that ended in a field goal attempt, but it was no good. You know, I, you know, when you think of a game like this, Jeff, you think there's got to be a defensive touchdown in here somewhere. You know, AK came pretty close. Well, we were a lot of us talked about how this game will probably be determined by a turnover. And so far we haven't seen the costly one yet. Don't throw it out there. Nope, he keeps it. He keeps it. it. Thought for sure he was going to go swing it out to Dukes. But no. Let's look at the replay. Tells him to go out. But, but the big thing, did anybody go with Dukes? Well, it looked like Bouvet kind of flinched a little bit, but he was back in the secondary. Second and seven. See split receivers, Dukes in the backfield. And now the option keeper by Pyron. And he's close. He may have it. Looks like the far side is going to give it to him. It's it's going to be a first down for the Griffins. Well, just think of Pyron in here. When he fakes and you got the kick and you lead up, he's not the, the tallest quarterback. And you get behind those big offensive linemen. And as quick as he is, and, and he's got really good speed, is – once he gets by there and gets to that linebacker area, you know, he usually can break a big one. He's hard to find when he's in that traffic, too. First and ten, and it's a rollout. Stops, throws deep, and it's caught at the 40 to the 30. First down, Tyler Adams. Big play. What, what? What a play right here. Watch Pyron. Watch the hit. He takes a big hit right there, but right on the money. Said this guy can't throw. And he's a tough competitor, let me tell you. He got clobbered. You were right. I believe that was. And I, what I liked about it, uh, Jeff, a little sprint out action right there. Get away from the defenders where you can see over the line. And Dukes has it to the 20, to the 15. Spin move. 10, still on his feet to the 8. This game's gotten exciting on offense, Swack. Right? Duke's right there. I kept waiting on him to put in another uh, gear right here. See the nice little spin move? Nice spin move right there. Now he's using those legs to gain an extra two or three yards. First and goal. Twenty on the play clock. Don't think they're going to call a timeout. They have their call on the sideline now. And Pyron communicates it. Eight on the play clock. Keeper to the six. And a good job. That's Hobby carrying him down. Hobby, man, wide open in there, too. Watch. You're going to have your puller, left guard, left tackle. Kick, turn up in there. Clock running, 5-20, third quarter. Three-point game, East Ascension with the lead. For all the marbles in 5-5A. Shotgun, Dukes inside the five to the three, maybe the two. Getting closer and closer, Coach. Two plays to get into the end zone. So this is where you often see that quarterback option, but he gave it straight up to. And Dukes. I tell you what, the offensive line for uh, Dutchtown had a little movement in there. Now they bring it in a heavy package. You see McCaffrey 
And a goo. And a goo's a guy that carries this, and I, I'm going to just say they're going to be going to That's the uh, AK from the Wildcat. Yeah, to the right. And AK is in for the touchdown. And good call. Touchdown right takes the lead. Good call. You you know change of pace. You get a fresh back in there that's very strong. You get some extra blockers in there and uh, power that thing into the end zone. And now Roussel with the important extra point. It's a three-point game right now. This would make it a four-point lead with 4.22 left to go in the third quarter. Roussel. Good, and we'll take a break. It's 14-10 Dutchtown. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. There are a lot of reasons Tanner McGee spent the last seven years fighting for families in the legislature. But there are three that stand above the rest. Julia, Grace, and Kate. As a father of triplet girls, Tanner believes the most important things we can give our children is a loving home and a safe community. That's why he served in the legislature and why with over a decade of legal experience, Tanner McGee will be a judge our families can depend on. And what was a 7-3 halftime lead for Dutchtown is now a 14-10 halftime, our third quarter lead for Dutchtown over East Ascension. 422, both teams traded touchdowns. It was a defensive struggle in the first half, but both teams have a long sustained drive right there, Coach. Very much so, and uh, I'm going to tell you, this is some power football, uh, offensively and defensively, and uh, not your typical running back. Uh, they are power backs, and they get after it, and even the quarterbacks when they're running the ball. The and the East Ascension with the ball the near the 40-yard line again. That's where they started their first drive of the second half as well, which led to a touchdown. A.K. Burrell, shout out to him. He got the touchdown. He also had the interception that led to the first touchdown for Dutchtown. So he's doing it on offense and defense tonight. Yep, having a good game. See Charles Lee and the East Ascension's band in action yeah. on the visitor's side. First and 10 from the 40. There I believe last drive was on the 39. And this is a good formation to run out of right here. This is where you might see the quarterback just keep it. First down, and that's what it is, and uh, not much. That's Blake Bowie, and he's helped out uh -oh. by number 93, Raylan Richard. That should have been a motion penalty right there because. Oh, a player goes down. One of the offensive linemen goes down. May have cramped right there. And, and actually, we'll keep it here. And let's go ahead and talk about the early college option one more time here tonight. The early college option program is in its 10th year of offering all Ascension Parish High School students the opportunity to earn their associate's degree from River Parish's Community College while also completing their high school diploma from one of the four APSB high schools. Students are eligible to play all sports at their home high school. In order to attend, students must begin in their ninth grade year. Their junior and senior year, they have a full college schedule. Enrollment for the 2023-2024 school year begins in January for a tour Contact early.college at APSB.org. You see that right there on your screen. And also want to mention East Ascension and Dutchtown both have football players on the field that attend ECO. And now it's second and ten. Back to the action, Coach. Shotgun, Samuel and Foster. Split <coughs> receivers, two left, two right. And Samuel, big hole. He's to the 40. He's to the 30. And he's going to score, and East Ascension takes the lead. Third lead change wow. in the third quarter, Coach. Wow. I, I, I didn't think Samuel had enough energy to get in that end zone. Now and he's jumping up there high-fiving people. And he was coming up limp just on the previous well, watch drive. Watch the play. Just a straight dive right there. And you're reading that in, I assume. Got past and, McCaffrey. Uh, 
I, I tell you what, I, I know the Dutchtown secondary is very fast, and Samuel just uh, didn't run away from them but uh, did not let them gain, gain ground. I've seen about four or five East Ascension games this season. That's the longest run I've seen this year from Samuel. Extra point. Good. It's 17 14, 331 left to go in the third. We'll take a break. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Hollis Orthodontics, Cotta Law Firm, Raising Canes in Prairieville, Ross Downing, GMC, SEC Eating and Air, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic Foundation. Advantage Therapy, Peak Performance Physical Therapy, for their support of our Griffin's Sports Medicine Program. Three lead changes in the third quarter at 17-14 East Ascension with the lead over Dutchtown. Portia Swack with you in Week 10, Thursday night football on the Rev, game of the week. Out of arrows to Well, kick. the Dutchtown fans just happen to just – Finally take a seat, then all of a sudden Samuel says, don't be sitting down. Now AK, let's see if he can do something on special teams. And, oh, kind of got to uh, make contact Came with close. Adams. Came close. Yep. Adams kind of got in his uh, lane there. Well, watch, he got some nice blocking right there. Boom, slide through there and just got tripped up a little bit. And it's first and ten for Dutchtown. Every drive, Coach, in the third quarter has resulted in a touchdown. And they've all been extended drives, too. Did you, did, did you call that in the third quarter? I definitely did not. No. I, I, I was wondering who's going to survive the third quarter. We were talking about the turnover might win it. It still might win it, but it's going to be a higher-scoring game. Well, got end of round, a pitch out, and yeah. lots of room to the 30, to the 40, to midfield. And that's Montrell Morris. No, make that no number five. That's uh, actually Caden Mackey on the carry. I thought that was number three for a moment. Watch if, if we get a replay here. A late flag. I mean, I don't know about a late flag. Horse collar. Could be. And that's another 15. So look. But watch on the outside this block right there. And another block right there downfield as well. So good blocking, and uh, and it kind of wrapped them up from behind. I don't know. That that looked kind of that that didn't look like a malicious uh, hit right there. And the quarterback keeper three yards. I guess they called a late hit, perhaps right there. I don't know about that. Got a horse collar. When uh, you know grabbing that uh, back by the shoulder pads or the jersey from behind at the collar level. Second and seven from the 25. Looking to the sideline. And option keeper, Pyron will not get the first down. But he gets about five. And it the Dutchtown fans are getting a little anxious here. They, uh, they are arguing for some late hits. Well, basically, it's not that late hit. It's a standing over. Yeah, the, uh, the taunting. And that should be called. But did not get called, and it's third down and four. You did see it, a good job catching that on the replay. And, and I will say, by Pyron, that was a good read. <laughs> that guy tackled the, uh, the back. And there's an injured Spartan on the field. We'll break right here, 17-14 EA. You're watching the Rev, Game of the Week. The athletic training staff of Dutchtown High School would like to thank Hollis Orthodontics, Tata Law Firm, Raising Canes in Prairieville, Ross Downing, GMC, SEC Eating and Air, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic Foundation, Advantage Therapy, Peak Performance Physical Therapy for their support of our Griffins Sports Medicine Program. So it's 17-14, East Ascension with the lead, and the injured player is still down. 
And we're going to keep it here for a little while. And this might give us a chance to talk about the power rankings because that's a big deal that a lot of people are talking about. And when you look at it, and you want to look at the three teams here in Ascension Parish because there could be lots of movement as a player gets up. So we'll talk about that. But well, we can look at it right now. But you see Dutchtown, especially at 17, and Santa Maria at 29. East Ascension at 9. They're probably going to get a home game. Dutchtown needs to win to get a home game. Santa Maria needs a win just to make the playoffs. We'll talk about that, but we're just about ready for this play. So that's something that we can set the table for yes. for the rest of the game. And you saw the top four teams as well. Rustin, Zachary, Neville, and Destrahan. Rustin took over the one spot. Third down, handoff. And it is, I think, enough for a first down. Far side, looks like yes. A oh, nice play right there. When it's third and three, a long three, and you hand that ball off right there and you get a uh, first down between the tackles right there. It's a good job there by Dukes. So first and ten, now inside the red zone at the 17. Dutchdown trying to hold serve. We had three scoring changes in the third quarter. It's well, they had field goal range, uh, no doubt about that, to tie it up. And there's Dukes trying to cut outside, and it's not going to happen. You can't hesitate on that. you gotta, you got to make something happen. I believe Stanga was down there near the bottom of the pile. Yeah, that's one we hadn't heard that name. You know, right off the bat, he was involved in a lot of plays uh, coming from that free safety spot. Yeah, he's been kind of silent since that first quarter. We're inside of a minute. And we have another injured player. And so we'll break again. Uh, 42 seconds left. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. The Avalon training staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment, Donaldsonville, Glass and Body, Gaucher and Amade, Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Chevrolet, Walk-Ons, Austin Fire Systems, Eustace Mortgage, SKR Construction, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. And on second down, we see the replay right this here. The play this we missed. Tyron on the keeper. Right there. And he gets a few. You've seen that a couple of times tonight. Burfitt stands him up and knocks him down. It's third and six. Big play as the quarter is going to end before this play happens. So it's 17 to 14. Well, maybe not. Look at this. They're coming under center. 3 1 0. So no play. That's the end of the third quarter. East Ascension wins the quarter 14 to 7. Our score is East Ascension 17, Dutchtown 14. We're going to break. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. There are a lot of reasons Tanner McGee spent the last seven years fighting for families in the legislature. But there are three that stand above the rest. Julia, Grace, and Kate. As a father of triplet girls, Tanner believes the most important things we can give our children is a loving home and a safe community. That's why he served in the legislature and why with over a decade of legal experience, Tanner McGee will be a judge our families can depend on. So the fourth quarter about to begin, uh, East Ascension 17-14. We were talking about the power rankings a moment ago, Swag, and uh, we, can't, we can't stress how important this is for Dutchtown, not just to win the game for the uh, district title, but to get a home playoff game. And, and you know, uh, Russell took over from Zachary, but Russell's playing West Monroe. West Monroe this week. Zachary's playing Catholic. Neville's coming up from 4A. Destrahan beat an undefeated uh, East St. John last week. And let's get back to the action. To round out that top five, Southside, East Ascension is familiar with them. They beat them in the playoffs last year. Third and six. And this is Dukes waiting for his blockers and does not get there, and it's fourth down. They're in field goal range. Roussel can make this, and he's going to come in to try to tie it. So... Well, I guess I'm going to have to say this for my 30th time, Jeff. Yes. 
I just don't like these kicks from these hash marks. It's not fair to these kickers. It's, it's tougher. It's wide the way it is in and, high school. And then, you know, basically what happens is you almost have to bring a guy over. It's up. It's good and it's and tied. 17-17 and we'll break again. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. From jambalaya, pastelaya, and gumbo to daily lunch specials, Pot and Paddle Jambalaya Kitchen has Cajun dishes to satisfy your hunger. Pot and Paddle has three locations to serve you, including the one on Cabela's Parkway in Gonzales, Jefferson Highway near Blue Bonnet in Baton Rouge, and Jubin Crossing in Denham Springs. You can dine in, carry out, or let them do the catering for an office get-together or tailgating at the big game. And don't forget about their delicious daily lunch specials. You can check out their specials and more on the web at potandpaddle.com. We're back, and it's 17-17. Not a lead change, but another score as Roussel makes the field goal, and it's going to be where we're at. We're all square, and the district comes down to the fourth quarter. Let's see if we get another um, – see what happens on the kickoff this time. They've been given East Ascension pretty good field position between the 40 and the 50. Now that's a lot better job right there. Yeah, that's back to the 15 or to the 18. And Bowie gets them down before the 30. They got to the 40 and the 39 on their previous two drives. They're not going to get there. So that's another another seven or eight yards. And that can make a big difference, Coach. You talk about these power rankings. Southside, East Ascension played them, I believe, in the second round. That was a first-round game. First round last year. And it's amazing. We have somebody injured on the field. But it's amazing how Southside just been in – a school for a few years. Right. They beat Acadiana this year. Right. They lost week one to Notre Dame, I believe, and then they've, they've run the table in, in maybe the toughest district in the uh, state in 5A. That's the, that's the one that has all the um, Lafayette schools and all the Lake Charles schools, and, and Karen Crow is back in it, and Barb and Acadiana, and so it's a really tough district. But uh, you look at that – East Ascension, we haven't talked about East Ascension very much because they're probably going to get a home game, but they're at nine. If they win tonight and some things happen uh, ahead of them, maybe an upset yeah. here or there, yeah. they could get to the eight. Yeah. And if, the, and that the only eight problem is, is, is some of these yeah. good t teams up front right. are playing good teams. I yeah. mean, you know, so I'm not real certain. It's just like Santa Ma, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to say the bad teams, but the – the teams with lesser records, right? You know they're not moving up or back a whole lot. I saw some Santa Mall kids uh, when I went down to take a break at halftime, and uh, they they pretty fired up about uh, um, going up against um, Live Oak uh, tomorrow night at the pit. And Foster keeps it, and he's going to get about seven. Getting well, maybe. Yeah, it's going to be second down and short, second and about two. As you see the replay there and a good tackle there by Kling. But uh, the thing that I wanted to f finish talking about with East Ascension, if something happens, if they win tonight and something, you get some type of upset ahead of them and they get to number eight, number eight means that you, with barring an upset, you could host two games. So that's something that, that East Ascension is playing for here tonight. So second down, run up the middle. It's close. They may give it to him. Well, again, you know, I, I'm going to just have to continue to say this, that the last play, where, where did they run? Inside or outside? Well, they ran off that left, that left corner. That yeah. And getting yards between the tackles is tough. Yeah. But they did get the first down. You see that trip formation to the left. That's into the sidelines. That's going to indicate maybe you're running so to the So they, they ran this play a while ago where they read this guy right here. And just bursting through the hole. Look at Samuel with some fourth quarter jets right there and uh, gets about three. Coach, I've been watching that guy since the seventh grade. A talent. He's a... And this is a guy that's getting better as the game goes. He, he has, he's been struggling through some injuries this game. He had to come out a couple of times. Well, you know, uh, I'm not, you know, th this is, you know, we, we had a cool snap that yep. kind of teased everybody. 
And now, you know, it's getting in uh, close to 80 during the afternoon. So, you know, this is not really football weather just yet. Yeah, it is kind of in Louisiana because the whole season's like this, it seems. As on second down, they try that slow developing play up the middle and it didn't develop enough. Yeah, I, like if I see, if I'm, I'm Walter, I'm running outside right here. Running outside. Get outside. You see coming from the back side, Anson McCaffrey. And it's third and six. This is a big play in this game. Nobody has stopped anybody from scoring in the second half so far. Nine minutes left to go. And the quarterback's going to throw. Receiver is open, changes direction, then has a change back. Overthrown and incomplete. Chasson. And Mackey had the coverage. No flags on the field. Yeah, not, not a good pass right there. Looked like Chasson had no idea where the ball was going. He, he, he was looking for it. He was going outside, then he came back inside. Yeah, he looked like he had the outside. guy beat a little bit by a couple of yards. Uh. Now Andaveros will punt, and Mackey is going to go deep. It's kind of unusual. We've seen a lot more of uh, AK back deep on punts. Let's see if Dutchtown comes after this. We've talked about that. Pressure gets it away easily. And it's on the ground, and East Ascension has it. And there's the break that we might have been talking about, Coach. And Ty Andre Hayes with the recovery. And your statement was who's back there? That was the other, uh, other player, Mackey, and not Burrell. And uh, it looked like Coleman contacted that. It looked like he grabbed an arm right there. That's, that well, is, you know, that's ooh, what I saw from here. That's what I see as well. From a monitor. but Not called. Nothing called right there. But it's first down. East Ascension, and now East Ascension's knocking on the door to take the lead again. And there's handoff for about three. Tough you, sledding up the middle. You always talk about that, Coach. And you got Lee in the game. Yeah, that was uh, Foster on the carry. So they're giving Walter Samuel a break. Second and seven. Movement on the D-line, no flag. Well, it looks to me like you got three down linemen and everybody else a little deeper. Here's coming number one. And looking right, fade. And up for grabs. Did he get over his shoulders and catch it? There's going to be discussion between the officials. Touchdown! Brennan Thompson. What a play. What a throw by Lee. And I know Lee is probably, as look at him, he's accepted. He's excited as you get. Do we have the replay? Let's look at this. I mean, three goes up, looking like a high jump. And basically, if, can we oh. get it and see where he landed? Because uh, that right foot was out of bounds. Well, his the, left the, foot was down. The left foot's down. He He's caught in. it. That's a touchdown. That is a touchdown. Yeah, you touch that pile on, you, you're in the end zone. Uh, that is, they made the right call. Wow, what a play. And look, well covered, too. And the extra point. Good, 24-17 EA, 7.37 left. We're going to break. You're watching the Rev Game of the Week. You've probably heard that Etel has become Rev. What you may not know is that we're revving up your Internet to symmetrical speed for free. Symmetrical speed means that your download and upload speeds are the same, thanks to the Rev All Fiber Network. The new speeds have been applied to your current internet plan, and there's nothing for you to do. Except enjoy shopping, gaming, streaming, learning, and laughing. Learn more at Let'sRev.com. Thanks for being a loyal customer, and enjoy symmetrical speeds from Rev. New name, same company. Jalen Lee connects with Brennan Thompson for the touchdown, and East Ascension takes another lead. 
24 to 17 with seven and a half minutes left to go in this game. And let's look at the replay. And look, credit the camera operators as they got the shot. His left foot came down first. His right foot was out of bounds, kicked the pylon, but it was the right call, and it's a touchdown. And AK at the five, trying to go inside and gets to the 22. Short return. Ontiveros. What consistency Jeff he's had the whole year. Every kickoff is between the goal line and the five-yard line. Does an outstanding job. And you see East Ascension's band, they're starting to get excited on the visitor's side as they're seven and a half minutes away from an unbeaten district title. Well, you have a nice uh, visitor section, um, and half of it is for the band, The uh, all the uh, dancers. And Pyron trying and barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. And then on the other end is the student body. Both schools well represented here with fans and students. So, and going to the game here, we didn't expect 24-17, but we did expect this game to maybe turn on a turnover, and you had that fumble on the punt that was recovered by East Ascension, and that's the difference in the ball game so far. Second and 10. And rolling out, throws, caught, and that's Mayo, and it's a short gain. They're going to give him forward progress to the 27. So that's going to be third and six. And good job by number seven again, Lamar Bolden. He, he holds on and doesn't let him go. So it's actually third and four. They're going to say the 29-yard line. Well, this is not the uh, the greatest passing exhibition, but as far as football games, it, it cannot get much better than this. And because secondary-wise, I think both schools are just very good. And there's a run, Dukes. First down. Six minutes left to go in this game. And Dutchtown needs a touchdown in order to tie this thing. And they've got half a quarter to do it. A win tonight would give them a share of District 5-5A. Ball at the 36. First and 10. And uh, tomorrow night, Walker and Denham. For the, maybe the other third. And there's a flag, and that's a hold. Stay there, too. Stay there. As Pearson Pyron gets five, but that's going to go back. So that's a costly penalty. It's going to bring up first down and long as they're going to accept the penalty. So they're going to say that the block in the backfield. That's a spot foul. So. Yeah, so they're marking it from a yard behind the line of scrimmage. It's an 11-yard penalty, second and 20, or first and 21. Ball at the 25. Five and a half minutes left in this ball game. And the clock is running. Now you have one back and four receivers. Three of them are left. And East Ascension going into a two-deep zone. And Pyro looking around. Downfield, up for grabs, incomplete. He overthrew the Sherry and... Bolden nearly came had the up with right the pick. call right there, Jeff. Watch the Sherry right here. Two safeties. He runs right at one and breaks it to the right. And you say, well, he looked like there was three guys around him. He's wide open, though. Yeah. But with the overthrow, Bolden nearly came back around with the interception. Passed the Sherry. But it goes incomplete. Lots of things could have happened right there, and it's just an incomplete pass. Second and 21. And option keeper, wow. and good job by Pyron getting 10 back. It's third and 11. That Coach, Pyron's a battler. Right. Coach, I want to bring this up right here. Is this a two-down situation, or do you punt, considering that you haven't stopped EA in the second half? How many timeouts we have left? Three and three. Three. I'm going to say you're going to have to go for it. 
So we have a stop in the action. You know, it's really easy for me to make that decision up here in this booth. I know. You're not going to get fired. (laughs) Nobody's going to yell at you. Well, they probably are at home. (laughs) Third down, fake, roll out. And he thought about doing it. Now he's throwing downfield up for grabs. And it's incomplete. And he got his hands on it and could not come down. Casey McCoy. That was nearly a huge first down for the Griffins. Well, Pyra was smart right here. Watch this. He's all by himself. Run. Nope. Can't run. I got two guys right here in front of me. And we've talked about seven. Bolden, he's made lots of plays. He just made another. And it looks like Dutchtown's going to punt and leave it to their defense. Clock stops 439. They need I don't a three think I would uh, try to field this. Low snap. Gets it away, line drive, and a Good great job. Bounce. And it's going to go, wasn't the prettiest punt, but it's going to go down to the 22. It rolled. So that's a 28, 44-yard punt. Now, let, let me just tell you, Jeff, Coach Mastretta might be thinking, I saw a block punt last week. Yep. And this might be the thinking right now. Call my timeouts and see if we get them in a punting situation. They'd go after it. And there's 426 left to go. District title on the line. It's time for big boy football, Coach. And, you know, this, this is when you, you, you guys, you got you, some guys in this game that are going to play college football. Yep. Somebody's got to step up. And so you got the two quarterbacks, and it's Foster. And gets a short gain. Does Dutchtown choose to call a timeout? Short gain. They do not. The second and nine. They have all three, so they could, they could still stop the, the. If they get a first down, they could still stop with three timeouts. But they're going to try to milk two minutes off the clock here. Well, you know, passing probably won't be part of the deal here. Second and nine. Twenty-two back in the game. Flag motion. I believe two guys are moving there at the same time. And you've seen that at, at inopportune times all night for East Ascension. East Ascension, what's at stake for them? They're 342 left to go from a 5-0 and perfect district season. Jeff, no bad snaps that I've seen. Don't curse him, Coach. No, I'm just telling you, no bad snaps uh, tonight. Yeah, and uh, I know what you're saying, Coach. And uh, and you got to give credit. You got to give credit uh, to East Ascension. That switch uh, from guard to center, center to guard. Right, Queen has come in and played center here tonight, and uh, he's done a good job. As it's third and eleven, as they stop Samuel right there. But if there's a bad snap here, Coach, you can't show your face at a. are, are, are you gonna you're gonna go home and your wife is gonna be? Uh, well, no, 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 that's just reality. I'm, I'm, I'm complimenting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 59. He he came in here and has done a He's heck done of a, a great job. job. He really has. And motion, and a whistle. Again, coach. And you saw this last week against Live Oak. We were trying to run out the clock, and it kept on getting pushed further and further and further back. And this is where the punt comes to the back of your head. Because, look, look, if they don't get anything right here, look where they're going to be punting. You might want to take a safety back here, too. 2.34 left to go. Dutch has all three timeouts. Shotgun. One back. Foster's probably going to keep this. There you go. Flag. They'll decline that. Foster gets it to about the 25. But there was a takedown. And it is declined. declined. Clock has stopped at 216. And now comes the punt. 
Well, you you, you got to call timeout here because uh, the ball. I, I I feel it's when the referee gets ready, he's going to start the clock. Well, uh, and they have called. Good, there timeout. you go. Nice timeout. And we're going to keep it here. And let's look at the schedule for our upcoming games of the week. As you know, there's only one game left in the regular season, and that's tomorrow night at the pit. A very important game for Santa Maz. They have a chance to keep their playoff streak alive as they play Live Oak. And then in the upcoming week, we have at least one playoff game at home. Right now, East Ascension is likely to get one. Dutchtown needs a win to get one. So we are likely to be at East Ascension, but you never know. There's still two minutes left to be played in this game, and that's going to be on Rev Sports 1 YouTube channel. So we'll know more in about a couple of minutes, and they're, they're rushing the house. Nobody's back deep. Good snap pressure. Got it away, and it's just going to roll around and get a Don't good touch East it. Ascension Do bounce. Do not touch it. Do not now touch that, it. Now they had to right there because it started to bounce back. Ah. 45. One yard, one yard. That, that would have been five more seconds off the clock. All right, 2.05 left to go. And you got 55 yards away from tying this game. And you need this game to probably get a home game in the playoffs and definitely grab a share of the district title. East Ascension on defense. What Three about a timeouts. screen? We haven't seen that a lot, and it's A.K. Burrell in the backfield now. <laughs> and it's a pass, halfback pass, open, and it's caught, 20, 10, touchdown! Wow. Halfback pass to Logan Mayo. Oh, wow. Wow. Did they score too soon, Coach? There's 156 left on the clock. And, and you're probably playing man-to-man -man is what I would say. Wow. Extra point to tie it. Tie game. We're taking a break. 24-24, you're watching the Rev. Game of the wow. week. Wow. You've probably heard that Etel has become Rev. What you may not know is that we're revving up your internet to symmetrical speed for free. Symmetrical speed means that your download and upload speeds are the same, thanks to the Rev All Fiber Network. The new speeds have been applied to your current internet plan and there's nothing for you to do, except enjoy shopping, gaming, streaming, learning, and laughing. Learn more at letsrev.com. Thanks for being a loyal customer and enjoy symmetrical speeds from Rev. New name, same company. One fifty-six left to go. Do we have that play in the in our repertoire here? What a call! What an execution! Look at the perfect pass. And Mayu cruises into the end zone. And this is everything you wanted in a big boy football game. And a short kick to the 30, fair catch. Oh, and there's contact. Is there a flag? No flag. <laughs> well. Boy, you can tell this is a rivalry game because it's intense right now on everywhere. Wow. Now, 156, three timeouts on both sides. And you remember in uh, timeouts, uh, you get one in overtime if we make it to that scenario. And then after the second one, I think you have to go for two every time. I do not recall. I'm not thinking about that right now. There's a lot of time left. Both teams could do something with it. And it's a keeper, about four. Foster keeps it behind left tackle. And they're going to move it back to the 
35. So it's going to be three and a timeout. And so let's reset it. It was 7-3 at the half. And then we had a lot of lead changes. You had a touchdown, East Ascension made it 10-7. Touchdown, Dutchtown made it 14-10. Touchdown, East Ascension made it 17-14. Field goal, Dutchtown made it 17-17. Then East Ascension got another touchdown to make it 24-17. And now it's 24-24. This game has gone back and forth, and it's been an awesome one to cover here, Coach. It is uh uh, the big time players have made big time plays. You know who just threw the touchdown pass? AK Burrell made all the plays tonight and, on the and touchdown you, side. And you've uh, heard that at name. least the ones that Pyron hadn't made. Yeah, you've you heard that name over and over tonight. Now you got number one and number twenty-two in the backfield for East Ascension. I got a feeling that this is going to be settled in regulation. And there's a handoff, and outside, and out of bounds, and a first down. And I told you earlier, and I, 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 this is just what I'm seeing from up here. Run outside, Walter. Yep. Run outside, Walter. You good, get a little good bit stiff of arm right there. Good job the, of blocking by number three. The East Ascension coaches are calling for a horse collar right there. Did not get the penalty. The officials are probably going to hold on to their flags unless it's a blatant call. Well, right you know, they, they, you know, I, I assume they've done a pretty good job. I, I hadn't really. Yeah, and they made the right call on that touchdown pass. And five yards on first down. They're close to field goal range for Adveros. No, they got a long ways to go. They got about, what, what, you have about 20, 25 yards to go for maximum distance. That's not far to go. What, a minute and a half or a minute and 20. Second and five. Keeper. That might be no. The far side is going a yard shy. It's third and one. East Ascension uh, may call a timeout right here. They do not. We're inside of a minute. I guess they're setting it up so that they don't lose in regulation. You don't want to give Dutchtown the ball. Dutchtown has all three timeouts, and they're not using them. 22 needs to carry this ball. And now we have a whistle and a timeout being called by East Ascension. There's 45 seconds left to go in this game, and let's talk about what's at stake here. East Ascension driving, trying to get a game-winning score in regulation. If they do get the win, they finish a perfect district season 5-0, and and they are in the running perhaps for a top-8 seed, and they're going to get a home playoff game. As you look at the power rankings, you see they're number nine. Dutchtown, if they lose, they can pretty much kiss a home game goodbye. And they would finish either second or third in district, depending on the Denham Springs. Well, you know, right now it's it's all about this chart right here that you're talking about. And that's what they're going by in the playoffs, not whether you finish third, first, second, or third or whatever. It's all about the power rankings with this new format that they have. And if there's uh, any question about your power rankings, if you're tied with somebody, then they go strength of schedule. Third and one. 47 seconds left. Tie game. Everybody's at the line. Samuel stood up. And the far side of official is at a first down mark. They're giving him a generous mark well, on the he, far he's side. A, he's the guy that the, the ball was being run to his side. He's the one that gets the mark. This guy. And that's a first down. And then the clock starts up again. 28 left to go. One timeout for EA. And they're going to keep it on the ground and stopped. So that's Bowie and McCaffrey, 15. Well, that's their last stopped. time out, right? So you have to get a first down right here and maybe clock it, depending on how you how far you get. Onaveros, we just saw him miss in the 40s, in the mid-40s. 
So you know what his range is, probably inside of 40. So you'd have to get, if they want an Onoveros field goal, they got to get to about the 20. And they have maybe two plays to get there. And uh, number nine needs to probably come in this game. Or sprint out and let number one run the ball. There's a lot at stake here. As you see the Dutchtown sound. Oh, we got 17 seconds. Uh, you know, you, you want to take back the statement that this is going to be finished uh, in regulation? Yeah, it's looking more and more like it won't be. <laughs> I think we're fixing to throw a, a long ball down here to this trips formation. Hard to that one receiver side over there. And Foster, whistle, and a timeout, Dutchtown. So they want to see what their, what kind of formation Very you're having. Very good call right there, Jeff. A little chess game here, right? Well, yeah, there's no doubt. You get the timeout call. And was he going to throw it? Mm -hmm. Or was he going to do like Pyron did earlier a couple of times, fake the, the pass out of here, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, then run the ball? I don't think he's going to run it. Well, I think, you know, basically, uh, he, you know, he, he, he could have been faking it to 22 and throwing it deep. So, Well, the thing is, too, you weren't expecting Dutch to call another timeout, and you're in a position where you need to get 20 yards so you probably had the play that you wanted right there, the play that you've been saving right there. And so Dutchtown saw the formation, saw the setup, called a timeout, and now they're ready for it. And now, now EA is probably going to have to come back with another well, play. Right, right now you've got to be well organized in what you're doing here, Jeff, because if, if, you know, if, if you do get it down the field, and let's say you get a first down, you get inside the 30, you're going to have to go and clock it. And you got 17 seconds. How much, how much time is it going to take to get there? They should have enough. Low snap on the ground. Who has it? On the plane. Clock running. They indicated that the clock should be running. They're saying East Ascension ball, and the clock is running out. Dutchtown came out with the football. Well, I, you know, I think that's beside the point right here because the clock's going to run out, and I think I, Foster had it. I, I was just wondering if, if uh, East Ascension, I mean, uh, Dutchtown was excited because they recovered it, or be, or they stopped them from you know getting a field goal try or a touchdown here. Well, you saw in the replay. I don't know if we have it again. Yeah. Foster had the ball. He was in his hands. He was downed. There was contact, and then he let go of the ball because it was a dead ball. So yeah. he has the ball right there. Yeah. And then he lets it go, and then after the play was whistled dead. So well, that's beside the point, all that stuff, because it's uh, – Yeah, but the Dutchtown fans at, that are watching it live, if you're back home seeing it on the replay, you just saw that they did make the correct call. Yeah. So Guy Mastretta. He's fired up. And uh, we haven't talked about his coaching job this year. They started out 0-2, and they were really struggling on offense. They scored seven points in their first two games, and they really didn't look like a strong offensive team. And then all of a sudden, they just exploded. And then you had the injury, and Pyron came in at quarterback after Oakland was injured. And then they went to another level. And Coach Mastretta, from week one to like week ten, has probably done his best coaching job that I've seen here at Dutchtown High School this year. There's no doubt. Um, you know, and you have to look at both sides of this too, uh, Jeff, because mm -hmm. uh, first of all, let's just go to the Dutchtown side. The we coaching staff, you know, made some changes. Defensively, they've been sound and excellent all yeah. year. Uh, the kicky game has been sound. And uh, the few little changes they had to make offensively, and that allowed them to take advantage of uh, Gary Dukes and, and uh, A.K. Burrell and Pyron. And so they, now you look at the other side right there. Uh, Coach Lee 
Starts off with Zachary. Mm-hmm. The score looks bad, but the game wasn't bad. Right. Beats West Monroe. What's their record right now? It's really good. It's it's not, eight and one going into tomorrow night against uh, Ruston. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what's mm-hmm. Destraham? They're in the top four, and might be the best team in the state, maybe yep. by far. Yep. Uh, so he's taken. And look, when you're getting pounded, mm-hmm. it's hard to come in that locker room and talk to those kids. Yep. We, we got to get. We got to be ready for next week, you know, and stuff like this. But he does that for a reason. Yeah. He gets them ready. Though those and, tough opponents uh, so, get them ready. You know, both coaches say. I mean, that's why they play in this game for district yep. right here. Exactly. Both of these teams. I mean, we talked about it at the beginning of district play. It looked like the two, the two favorites at least from non-district play were Denham and Walker. And Denham held their ground. Walker kind of faded. And Dutchtown rose to the occasion. And East Ascension, nobody's beating them yet. And they're in overtime in the final game. And they're going to get the ball first. That's what happens in overtime. When you win the toss, you make the other side go on offense first so you can see what you need to win the game. And a pitch. Nothing. Maybe a yard. And that's Anson McCaffrey on the tackle. Got another kid down with a, looks like a leg cramp. Yeah. You've seen a lot of that here tonight. And we'll keep it here because we don't want to miss any action. But, you know, going back to East Ascension, since I talked about Guy Mastretta and you brought that up, one and four to five and four. It took them until week nine to get a winning record. But the experience that they had playing those teams is just so valuable. And you, one game you didn't talk about was the fifth game, which I covered, which was the De La Salle game. They had a chance to tie that game near the end of the fourth quarter. And De La Salle is a really good team in the Division Two select. And they, 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 they played toe-to-toe with them. So you saw the improvement happening week five. And then after that, they just yeah. came out. And they were a little bit up and down in district, uh, East Ascension was. Uh, I, I was really impressed with them in the Walker game. Yeah. Impressed with them in the Santa Mall game. Denham Springs, they come from behind right there to score two touchdowns in the last they, two minutes. Let's be honest. They stole that yeah. game. And uh, came up with some plays. Live Oak, it was kind of a battle to a certain extent. But they came out on top, and here they are. Uh, f- playing uh, in overtime here for the district championship. The offense has been the inconsistent part. The defense has been solid, but there have been some weeks where East Ascension can't snap the ball to the quarterback, and then there have been some weeks, like this week, where they can score <clears throat> on four possessions in the second half. Well, I think uh, if you look at Dutchtown, you know, you look at the left score right off the bat, they're not scoring much. But nobody's scoring points against them. And I'm sure Coach Mastrata says, guys, if you just can score two touchdowns, we can win every week. Maybe not tonight, but every every week. They, the defensively, they played plenty good enough to win games. So they're about nine and a half yards away. Roll out, Foster. Nearly broke through there. He gets good yardage, though, close to the five. So they got about half of it right there. Third down. This is a big play because if you can keep them close, keep them. If, if East Ascension gets close, they got another play to do it. If Dutchtown can hold them. And maybe keep the ball right here or push them back a little bit. They may have to choose on the uh, I just think outside is the place to go because they are fixing to pack up. Look at 25. <laughs> Seven, six, five. 25, on the play block. he says, uh, Three, just give me a spot. Two, one. They got the playoff. And it's a reverse. And he is in. There is a flag. And let's see if they decided that he did not get the playoff. It was close. Penalty. What do you call? So it's a 10-yard penalty, we're being told. So 
It's holding. Must be a hold. Ted Babin just announced it was a 10-yard penalty. Now, this has got to be a passing down right here. This is where you probably would go with the uh, two quarterback set and go with Lee under center, right? Or at least from the shotgun. But he's not there. No. It's going to be Foster. Foster gets the call, the running quarterback. I don't think he's going to run it up the middle here, Coach. Going to the end zone, fade. One-on-one, -on -one, up. And Can't do that, Coach. It's you cannot raise those hands. Uh, and it's a flag. It's pass interference. Yep. As that was Langwa that made contact. And it's, let's see how they're going to mark this. Is it an automatic first down, Coach? No. So it's going to be third, third down from the seven. From the seven yard line. But that got them the yardage back from the penalty, most of it. Not all of it. Well, you still got two downs if you want to, if that's what you want to do. Uh-oh. All right, a little broken play designed. Jupiter into the end zone, up. Incomplete. They were going to Foster. That was a, that looked that looked awkward, but that was designed. Right, Coach? Interesting. Or maybe not. What well, they were going to do, the, uh, the pitch to Jupiter, who was going to throw AK on the coverage. And they got to go for the field goal because the ball was at the seven. So Dutchtown knows if this field goal is made, a touchdown wins it. Well, here we go on this hash. Five, I think seven out of nine on the year. Five out of seven. Five out of Snap seven on the year. good. Kick up. Good. And East Ascension has the lead, but a little bit anticlimactic because now Dutchtown could win on a touchdown. And they got the field goal in their pocket to tie it and go to the second overtime. That's why you want to win the toss. And that's well, why you want to put you know, EA on the ball. Uh, I mean, that could, that, that could put pressure on you, too, that we, we, we have to kick a field goal. Yes. You know, we have to score. I think we were in a overtime game of that went, I think, five or six overtimes. I remember the Dutchtown Santa Maw game that went that distance. That, 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 was, that, that was another Week Ten yeah. classic. And now, Dutchtown is a touchdown away, ten yards away from a share of the district title and a possible home playoff game. I think number two is going to carry this rock. He does. And cuts inside to the three. You call that one, Coach. You look at him. He's, he's, he's pointing to Coach. They want No, he wants to go in, but they're going with the Wildcat. Let's see. They're, it looks like they're going to go with the Wildcat. There's, there's an injured player. I believe that's Hobdy coming off the sidelines. But I think... That they were, you saw McCaffrey and a and a goo come in. That usually means AK Wildcat formation. But now, let's see. Nope, it's Wildcat. AK Wildcat. Three yards, and that's Cozy with them too. Running to the right. Shotgun, keeping it flag. Motion. This is going to come back. This is going to come back. Oh, boy. Drama, coach. You don't think this game means something to both sides? And, you know, when it's all said and done, you know, they I'm not going to say they won't have a clue where they stand or whatever, but have to wait till Saturday, uh, I think, afternoon to, to figure out just to, where they're going to play, where they're going to go. Yep. They're going with AK you know, they Wildcat know already again. They're in the playoffs. Keeper throws. Tebow pass up. Did he get it? Touchdown! And Dutchtown wins. And we have a tie for the district title. 
and Dutchtown still has hope for a home playoff game next week. And the touchdown kept pass from A.K. Burrell to Dixon Agu, the safety to the middle linebacker for an offensive touchdown, Coach. And, and you, you had to think they had some, uh, you know, was something, a card up their sleeve right there because they got a five-yard penalty and they kept that same group in there. And uh, what a play. And so the final score is Dutchtown 30, East Ascension 27, overtime classic in 5-5A is not finished yet because you have two teams that are going to tie for the district title and Denham Springs is one win tomorrow away from a three-way tie. We're going to break and wrap this up. I hate to break right now, but i got to catch my breath here, Coach. <laughs> and so we'll break. You're watching The Rev, Game of the Week. There are a lot of reasons Tanner McGee spent the last seven years fighting for families in the legislature. But there are three that stand above the rest. Julia, Grace, and Kate. As a father of triplet girls, Tanner believes the most important things we can give our children is a loving home and a safe community. That's why he served in the legislature and why with over a decade of legal experience, Tanner McGee will be a judge our families can depend on. B.T. Chapman and A.J. Pickett with Advantage Therapy are honored and excited to team up with Dutchtown High School's athletics. At Advantage Therapy, we are dedicated to helping our patients regain the highest possible functional status through one-on-one -on -one patient care. Advantage Therapy has spent nearly two decades providing both outpatient orthopedic physical therapy and occupational therapy to the people of Ascension and surrounding parishes. From all of us at Advantage Therapy, Go Griffins! Dr. Brian Hollis is Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Dr. Hollis has an excellent reputation for bringing state-of-the-art technology and the highest standard of patient care to Ascension. He attended LSU, LSU Dental School, and he completed a residency to become a board-certified specialist in orthodontics. An avid supporter in our community, Dr. Hollis is married to Celeste Pyron Hollis, and they have four children. Dr. Hollis, Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Grow up smiling with Hollis Orthodontics. Hi, we are live with the PPTV Network, where one of the top athletes is about to make his important decision. We know his character, and nothing will hold him back. I'm glad to have my family and friends here for this choice. It's more than my career. It will affect the rest of my life. I choose peak performance physical therapy. The decision is in. Why choose peak? The reputation and their record of success is unmatched. When it matters most, another patient chooses peak performance physical therapy. Buick GMC Buying Center wants to buy your car. It's fast, easy, and fair. No matter what make, no matter what model, no matter what mileage, the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center wants it. And we'll pay you cash for it, even if you don't buy from us. It's the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Cash for your car at the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Get to know SEC Heating and Cooling this year. Locally owned and operated by Stephen Conyers since 2013, SEC Heating and Cooling works with residential and commercial customers in Ascension, East Baton Rouge, Livingston, and surrounding parishes. SEC specializes in preventive maintenance, repair, and complete change-out and installation of energy-efficient central air systems. From professional sales and expert installation of central AC systems to repairs and ductless AC systems, we can handle all your needs. For total peace of mind, call SEC today. No one teaches you what to do immediately after an accident. Once everyone is safe, your first call should be to an attorney, not the insurance company. 
Don't let the insurance company take advantage of you at your time of need. Call the Title Law Firm. We'll walk you through what you need to do in real time. But you can take advantage of the Title Law Firm's 30 years of experience. Before you call your insurance, make a free, no obligation call to the Title Law Firm. Call 756-0007 when you're injured. You've got to call. You've got to call Tata. Final score in overtime, Dutchtown 30 and East Ascension 27. And Coach Mistretta with the district title share, and the kids love it. They love their coach. And Guy Mistretta has done a great job this year getting this team from the depths. And look at the replay. Tebow pass, safety to middle linebacker for the touchdown, Agu. And And basically uh, Agu was lined up in the backfield. And what a tremendous job. You had to give a little bit of a fake. Yes. That's true. And, uh, you know, you see them uh, leading it in the prayer at the end as uh, they need, they need to, to thank God for that victory because it looked, it looked tough. It looked really dramatic. They needed a halfback pass from Burrell. Burrell threw more touchdown passes than Pearson Pyron tonight. He had two. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to put it. Yeah, and uh, if he's not the player of the game with the two touchdown passes and the interception. Well, I'm so going to tell you Your what. best players, your two-way players, lead you at the end. But um, before, I, before I go all the way here with Dutchtown, Look at EA. That, that's, that's a heartbreaker, but they, have, they fought hard, and they came back, and they had the lead, and they still have a share of the district title. There's nothing to hang their heads low about either. Well, I, I think it starts with, with the first thing, uh, the switch that they made at center, and uh, that was very productive for them throughout the night. Uh, you know, they, they, they're right on the edge, you know, with uh, Samuel, you know, leaving the game a couple of times, ached up. Some linemen uh, cramped up. Uh, Lee comes in and does a heck of a job at quarterback, throws a touchdown pass. Um, so, you know, they, they had a lot of positive things. And, look, let me just tell you, East Ascension has had a hard time doing what this year? They've been just with their consistency in scoring. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They scored 24 points against a team that – Average seven point, giving up seven points a night. Right. And so uh, maybe they are turning a little bit of a corner because uh, scoring 24 against a um, very good defensive team. And then on the other side of it, you know, uh, Dutchtown scoring um, 30 against a very good defensive team. And, you know, right off the bat, you know, everybody in these stands were thinking this thing's going to be three nothing, right? Six three, and it I turned did. out being just one heck of a high school football game against two very good teams. An instant classic for sure. And let's kind of just wrap things up and talk about what this means for the district. It's a two way tie at the at the district title right now, but it could be a three way tie if Denham Springs beats Walker at home tomorrow night. And as far as the power rankings go. Dutchtown may have just played their way into a home playoff game next week. East Ascension, for all intents and purposes, should also get a home playoff game. So this could mean two games to choose from next week for our game of the week. So we'll figure out where we're going to go in the near future and let you know about that. But we're not done yet, Coach. Tomorrow we're going to the pit, and that game means something too. And so don't forget that. It's going to be Live Oak at Santa Mon. What's at stake there, Coach? Uh, I, the, the big thing that's at stake, and I think Live Oak is at maybe 31 or 32. I don't think they could get in. You're only going to move up a notch or so if you if you win. But Santa Mall has to win to get in. And, and uh, You want to do that. And, and very capable of winning to get in also. Did not have a good week, uh, game last week. Uh, need one this week. So Guy we'll- Mastretta. First victory over East Ascension. Yes, the streak is broken. So, uh, so uh, he's got to be happy about that. So that so that's going to wrap it up, though, Coach. We got to we got to end it. We got to go home. We got to get rested for tomorrow. <laughs> I got I got ISSP duty bright and early in the morning. So I'm we're playing gonna, golf. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, don't brag about that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right, we're going to wrap this up though. Our Good final game. score: 
Dutchtown in overtime beats East Ascension 30 to 27. And so thanks to everybody. Thanks to Caleb and uh, and for his good job. Thanks to our director Andre and all the camera operators out there for their excellent performance. And thanks to Lyle Boudreaux, who is sweating out World Series Game 5 right now. We, we, we appreciate you and all that you do as well. And so we'll see you tomorrow out of the pit. You've been watching the Rev Game of the Week.